Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck Boston oh! Hello, beautiful people. It is Overreaction Monday, November 21st, 2020. This sports show starts now. Football is here, and it is Thanksgiving week. Happy Thanksgiving week Woo! to all of you. Massive games in store both on Thanksgiving and this weekend in the college and football, uh, NFL football variety. The Chiefs is the Chiefs. The Cowboys spanked the Vikings. I mean, spanked the Vikings so hard that CBS said, this is, this is not allowed to be our national game anymore. Nope. Mm. That was in the third quarter. They could have done that in the second quarter. The Vikings got their asses beat laid an egg. Micah Parsons continued to be an absolute menace when it comes to being a game wrecker. The Eagles squeak one out against the Colts. I know everybody's happy ah. about that. Looking at you, Joe Thomas, and you, Bill Cower. <laughs> the Colts should have won that up 13-3. They give up a touchdown run from Jalen Hurts in which he could have literally done the worm all the way in with how wide open it was. Great play design, great coaching by Sirianni, who chewed out some Colts fans immediately afterwards, letting them know that they ain't dog enough to coach and win against Sirianni. It was electrifying, I mean, an electrifying Sunday at Lucas Oil. Mm -hmm. The place was alive. We were going to beat the Eagles. Wide. And then we did. Parks Frazier, 30-year-old play caller. Okay, first oh. drive. We're doing Jonathan Taylor, Jonathan Taylor, Jonathan mm -hmm. Taylor, Jonathan what? Taylor, Jonathan what? Taylor, Jonathan what? Taylor. What? First touchdown scored on an opening drive. I think it's like last Christmas for the Indianapolis Colts. They had had zero success on the opening drive in the first 15 for the Indianapolis Colts for almost a damn year. First drive against the Eagles, pound it out, go right down the field, score a touchdown. Then the next drive, we get the ball back. Defense makes him uh, kick a field goal. Uh, we go with a little out to uh, Jonathan Taylor. Mm -hmm. He gets tackled five yards behind the line of scrimmage then two incompletions, and we punt the ball back. And it's like, no big deal. Parks Frazier and everybody over there will understand that uh, what we did in the first drive was vastly different than what we tried in the second drive. So next one, we'll do that again. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> going through some growing pains. Going through some growing pains with a 30-year-old offense coordinator, but he should figure it out. The Eagles are back on the right side of things. I'll tell you what. Saw that Eagles team a lot of toughness, a lot of grit. They had to go through some adversity and get a big win on the road. Good for them bouncing back after a loss to the commanders. Speaking of the commanders, don't look now. Commanders are fucking hot. Yeah, Steve. That, that NFC East is going to be a conversation piece whenever it comes to the end of the season, and I can't wait to do it and follow along tonight. Massive, massive Monday night football game in Mexico. Oh, what? In Mexico. Okay. And I think the interesting thing about this Cardinals and Niners matchup is not only the fact that it's in the NFC West, but mm -hmm. also Colt McCoy starting a quarterback for the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Kyler Murray is out. Jimmy G and the boys taking the show on the road to Mexico, being favored by nine and a half. We'll break down that and everything that happened yesterday on this beautiful Overreaction Monday. We have overreaction tweets from all over the Twitter. Cannot wait to dive into all the NFL fandoms and how their emotions are on this November 21st already. It is a beautiful day to have a beautiful day. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. Connor, let's dive in with you first. Uh, punt return to win the game. Hell yeah. I sent some text messages to some people over there in the New York Jets operation. I've gotten zero turns. Mm. I don't know if they were trying to kick that ball out of bounds or they were saying, hey, just got to cover a kick. Let's cover a kick. We are a team that practices. We have a good punter. Sure. We got to do our thing. They're on the 32-yard line. He hits a bomb end over end right down the middle of the field. Not high enough. Certainly far enough. A lot of field to have to defend. One cut. Hit the wall. Boom. Punter misses. And all of a sudden, the New England <laughs> Patriots – in a game that was 3-3 three to three, all the way until there was eight seconds left in the fucking game. Hell yeah. Win with a punt return, and obviously that's Belichick. Belichick talking about it afterwards, knowing that this is how this game was going to be. The Jets are always a tough team. We're prepared. We're ready. They get a win. They're still in the playoffs. The Jets are almost dead now, with Zach Wilson saying after the game that he does not feel like he's let down mm -hmm. the defense. No. Have you feel like uh, you let down anybody? No. no. It moves on. Oh. Well, he had two yards offense in the second half. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver for the Jets rookie say hey, that's not that's horseshit. Uh-huh. <laughs> Bob Sala asked about it. He says, 
That's dog shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's Zach right. Wilson says, no. Yeah, no, 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 we'll move cool. on. <laughs> we'll gritty right through this whole thing. He is being attacked, both not only for how he answered that question, but for being a bad teammate. Dan Orlovsky did an entire thing this morning. This guy didn't know the playbook. <laughs> yeah. This guy didn't even know the playbook. Uh-oh. Very egregious Very. of somebody to say, but I think Dan has a point. Whenever he you listen to his video breaking it down, Zach Wilson appears to not know what everybody else is doing. But remember, just a few weeks ago, Zach's back. That was a big announcement. Yeah. Then they uh-huh. go on some wins. Then we get some tweets from Jets people saying, Zach's back, Zach's back. I feel like there's a chance that Zach's about to get packed and move on for the other team, not only because the defense probably heard that and is not happy about it, not only because Bob Sala has openly said that the offense that he is running is dog shit, but because there's a veteran sitting in that building. God damn right. right. He's ready to take over those young uh-huh. bucks and maybe get, get them on a run. But nonetheless, the Patriots get a win. You're feeling incredibly proud of yourself. That game stunk. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, it did. You yeah. guys get a win. Now you're staring down a Thanksgiving matchup against the Vikings who just got slobber knocked by the Dallas Cowboys. How are the Patriots feeling this morning on this glorious overreaction Monday? I feel unbelievable. I mean, now that Matthew Judon has cemented himself as the defensive player of the year, probably going to break T.J. Wide's sack record. Wide. Sorry, Tony. It, it just is what it is. Uh, yeah, it but no, the happen. Jets are the Jets. We knew this. Belichick actually said this last week. And to Dan Orlovsky's point, Zach Wilson knows the playbook. He just fucking stinks. I mean, oh. we, a couple weeks ago, were talking about how the Jets were awesome. You know, they're going to go on and be a good team. They're not. They're terrible. They're 6-4, and four, but they're terrible. Possibly the worst 6-4 and four team in the history of the NFL. Jeez, now, on the Patriots so. side of things, yeah, sure, we only scored 10 points, and seven of them came with 10 seconds left in the game, but that was the game plan the entire time. Bill, no. Get it to the fourth. Get it mm-hmm. to the fourth, be in the game, and then let's just make sure they punt the ball with less than a minute left, and then we'll go down and score and, you know, walk this thing off. And that's exactly what we did after watching the Vikings yesterday. I'm not worried about it. Hey, guess what? If we play that same game against the Jets, we beat the Vikings yesterday. How about that? Is so, that a big deal? I think so. Uh, listen, the Vikings looked terrible yesterday. Yeah. Late an egg. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I guess that's going to happen in a 17-game season. But at home, this late, with that much on the line against a very good, very good NFC team that you're probably going to see in the playoffs if you happen to make it that far, especially with this brand-new Vikings team, they lay an egg, and it was bad. Bad, bad. Yeah. A lot of teams in the past that have gone on to do special things have done such things, both week 11, week 15, sometimes week 14, so they can move on. They're probably happy that it's only a four-day break until Turkey Day when mm-hmm. they get to take on the Patriots, who have not looked efficient at all uh, on the offensive side of things. But Dallas hangs 40 on them. Micah Parsons wrecks them. You did an interview uh, with the Minnesota Vikings social media team this morning to preview this Thanksgiving <laughs> matchup. And I'll t- you tried your best to not have any of the quotes get used. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you should have heard Con- – and I will say this about Connor. Connor is always Connor. That's right. Connor is a man that we all love, we enjoy. He was asked to do an interview with the Vikings. Congrats on that being asked. Yeah, and also, oh, wow. thanks to the Viking social media team for wanting Connor to get involved in that thing. The first thing Connor said was, if the Vikings play like they played uh, this past week, we don't even have to worry about them playing all against us on Thursday – but maybe just rewrite the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Blow it up. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I don't know if the Viking social media is going to put that out. Probably not. But I, he talked for 10 to 15 minutes. So whenever this video comes out, know that that's probably the only thing in which he did not just fucking completely bury the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Victor the Viking got a shot in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we learn about this Vikings team. Now we get an opportunity to see, are they real or are they not? Is this a new Kirk Cousins or is this the old Kirk Cousins that everybody had assumed, including myself, that was dead and gone? Because once he started getting some pressure, it felt like he was missing throws. He was getting a little bit antsy. They didn't protect him for shit. Micah was running all over the place, as was that entire D-line. But he looked like a Kirk Cousins that he hadn't looked like all season because of the pressure that was on him. Now, do they bounce back against a Bill Belichick defense? We shall See, Tone Diggs, one half of the hammer. Done. Cowboys loses in a valiant effort against yeah. the Cincinnati Bengals. What did you learn about the Bengals yesterday that says maybe they're contenders this year because there's not a lot of good offenses mm-hmm. around the NFL? That Yesterday, at one point in the 1 o'clock games, only one team had scored more than seven points. Yep. Now, is that defense is catching up? Is that offense is getting worse? 
could be a combination of all of those things combined. But high-scoring affairs are not really the norm this particular mm -hmm. season. So the Bengals hanging 37 on the Pittsburgh Steelers is an impressive feat, no matter how you cut it or slice it or dice it. They also gave up 30 mm -hmm. to the Pittsburgh Steelers. You think the Bengals are a team that are going to be able to make it in the long term after watching them play against your Pittsburgh Steelers and getting a win yesterday? Yes, I do. Um, I think yesterday cemented um, with Jamar Chase out that and a lot of people already knows, but T. Higgins is a fucking dog. Dog. Um, so when Jamar comes back, I feel like that offense and Joe Burrow are, are they're starting to actually they're starting to click a lot. Um, I would be worried for their defense though, because uh, Steelers have not looked great on offense this year, and um, putting up thirty on your defense may be a worry for the rest of the season. Uh, but I don't think their offense has anything to worry about at all. Yeah, and I think Pickett looked a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Had some misses, but it seems like the Pittsburgh Steelers, Najee Harris ran a little yeah, bit differently. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh might be in a good spot in the future. Sure. But it ain't about them right now. It's about the Bengals. You get Jamar Chase back. Plus, they got Trenton Irwin, huh? Uh -huh. This guy out of Stanford, long hair, number 16, six yeah. foot two, Beast. runs great rods, was a, be a weapon for them. And then Pirine, who I think we all learned how his name is said yesterday when they said it a hundred different times mm -hmm. when they were mm -hmm. talking about how big of a day. Mm -hmm. First running back in Bengals history to have three receiving touchdowns happen against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Obviously, without Mix Pirine doing his thing. Good for them. Honestly, good for the Bengals because we had no idea what they were going to be. They hit a couple lulls. They hit a couple down spots. They're out Jamar Chase. We thought that was going to be a big deal. Hanging 37 in Pittsburgh on Pittsburgh is a big day. And P. Ryan said hello to the world. And at one point on the sideline, he had his tongue out. That thing goes to the middle of his Adam's <laughs> apple. Yeah, yeah. We're tongue. talking about a doll guy soon from mm -hmm. P. Ryan. Congrats on the success around there. Uh, the boys in the back well, would be remiss if we didn't give a shout out. Nick, obviously, back there. Z back there and then the man who's closest to the camera ladies and gentlemen a guy who's a fan of a team who has been fucking awful for a long time okay. oh, yeah. they get a new head coach last year he says he's going to gnaw kneecaps and turn the entire thing around they say give this guy a lifetime contract Hell well yeah. now he's winning games three straight yep. going into new york to yep. take on van wink van martindale <laughs> that's right <laughs> And he, Jared Goff appeared to be a guy. Jamal Williams, a man who gave a motivational speech to the team on Hard Knocks, day three of training camp, mm -hmm. in which it was tough to take serious. He's, now he has the most touchdowns mm -hmm. in the entire NFL. Mm -hmm. Are the Lions legit? They fire the corners, coach, mm -hmm. and they have a little bit better coverage, it appears. Their defense is kind of fixed. What is going on? Three straight wins. Congrats to you. Is this Woo. the brand, brand new Lions? Lions? Foxy, I didn't watch the game entirely. What did you feel? We are dominating the trenches. We are playing MCDC football. It is so gritty. The O-line is moving bodies. The D-line was stopping Saquon the whole time. You can't stop Danny Dimes. He's going to run all over the place. That's how it goes. But to your point, I don't know where this defense came from. We fired the defensive backs coach, and now it's a completely new defense. The best, most important thing, though, is our young guys are making plays. Hutch has a pick. Kirby Joseph has another pick. Amon, Ray, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Nailed. certified stud. And then to your point, Goff just didn't turn the ball over did what he had to do. I love the offensive play calling, and now the defense is playing good. It's crazy. I don't know how that happens, but it does, and now we went three in a row. Hottest team in football. Bills Mafia, we're coming for that ass on Thanksgiving. I don't know if you're the hottest team in football. The Commanders what? could potentially take that, and mm -hmm. uh, the Chiefs and the Bills, still the Chiefs and the Bills. The Titans though. won like seven straight or something. Yeah, the what? Titans, Titans just got to win over the Packers. They're yeah. very good, but and I understand that you're the hottest team that you've ever seen yeah. in your lifetime <laughs> of the yeah. Detroit Lions. I can understand that. I'm happy for the Lions getting a big-time win. What are the Giants now, though? You know, mm. it's, hard not, it, it's hard not to take a loss to the Lions difficult. Like Giants fans, you know, mm -hmm. just a couple weeks ago, Dayball had it all figured out. Yeah, king of the world. Wink Van Martindale mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. was the defensive answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. genius. The Giants are the Giants. Saquon Barkley might win the fucking MVP. Mm-hmm. Then you lose to the Lions, and it's a big day to look in the mirror and go, what are we? <laughs> yeah. You need to know that this ain't the same old Lions. This is the brand new Lions. So you can't be that disappointing yourself. you got to turn around. There's a lot of football left still to be played. Speaking of the, one of those teams we just mentioned being a hot team, the Bills go to Detroit mm -hmm. and take care of business against the Browns. I'm happy for the Bills, who you know started out a little bit, a little bit of a dogfight. Then they started using a little bit of tempo. Then Josh Allen gets into his rhythm. Josh Allen gets going a little bit. Stephon Diggs had a moment early in the game where McDermott had to talk to him and say, hey, chill out. Everything's going to be okay. And Diggs was like, I just think what we're doing right now 
is not the best option. Mm -hmm. What's the best option? I'm going to be wide the fuck open in the end zone, throw me the ball. They end up doing that. They get a couple of run scores. Josh Allen throws the ball so fucking hard he falls down. This guy is throwing seeds still. Tyler Bass is hitting from 56 yards, putting it through. If it would have been good from 70, maybe that thing hits middle of the net. Okay, Jeez. middle of the net, Tyler Bass, who goes from having a kick in a snow globe to kicking in Ford Field. Mm -hmm. And he says, thank you very much. I'm going to make this by 20 yards from 56. Montgomery gets in. Naeem Hines had a little bit of uh, a couple of different packages for him. They haven't really got him involved. Yeah, nice return. punt return. Yeah, see, <clears throat> if I die, I die. Mm -hmm, He'll yep. get there in special teams. And the offense side, they had him on a little end around thing where he ended up getting caught up. I I'll be excited to see how they implement him more into the offense. But the Bills take care of business. And yeah. congrats to the Bills for everything they had to deal with. Those videos that were coming out of Buffalo of them, you know, plowing streets for players to get to the airport. And we had asked, and by we, I mean me on Friday, have we thought about getting a team out of there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, earlier. How oh, that's going to work. You know, before getting a team out of there before. And they said, well, there's actually Sal Capaccio, who did an incredible job reporting, and I appreciate Sal. He said there's actually a little bit of a window there where it's a break of snow. It's like – Okay, I just feel like if you know something's coming, you should maybe take advantage of it because uh -huh. the Bills had all the disadvantages this week as the home team. They lost a home game this season. Yeah. But not only lost a home game like from the standpoint of your crowd and everything like that, but their lives were much worse. They had to do Zoom meetings, could do walkthroughs, could barely get to the airport, get to the airport, they get there. They're staying in probably the third option hotel because of them having to schedule there late. It's like everything was working against the Bills. And at the beginning, you thought maybe the Bills are going to lose this to the Browns. Instead, they turn it around. The Bills are still a wagon, and I'm incredibly pumped up about that for the Bills Mafia folk. Yeah, and that race to the finish for the Bills and the Dolphins is going to be unbelievable to watch in the AFC East because right now, you know, the Bills, uh, they're 7-3. and three, They're unbelievable. They're still in the wild card right now. They're not top of the division. The Dolphins control it, and they have already beat them once, so they have that tiebreaker at the moment. So seeing what is going to happen with the Bills and both the Dolphins because the Dolphins are on a bye, a late bye. You always talk about how that's a pretty important thing. And for them to get that, then, you know, Tyreek Hill gets to rest his legs a little bit. Waddle, Tua can get back into the playbook. Feels like the Bills and the Dolphins, whoever ends up winning that uh, division, is going to have a massive home field advantage either way. This is crazy to think about in 2022 because how we thought the NFL was going football-wise. It's whoever has the offense yeah. mm -hmm. that is good enough is going to win a Super Bowl. Normally, there's a bunch of good offenses, and we say, hey, this is a Super Bowl winning defense. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that. Like, hey, mm -hmm. we think this defense will be able to win a Super Bowl with this team matched up with obviously they have the offense because rules have changed. The game has changed. Offense kind of took over the NFL. This season, defense is – Defense are handling fucking yeah, business. Is it, is it a new generation of guys that understand the RPO a little bit better, different bodies? Does this mean offenses are going to start to evolve again? Yes. Look for this upcoming offseason for offenses to start evolving in a certain fashion. Are they going to go bigger and heavier? Maybe. Is there going to be a new iteration that we haven't even thought of yet where there's some hybrid situation going on with all tight ends? Who knows? Something's going to happen with the offensive side of the ball in this particular offseason, I think, to get more explosive games into point scoring-wise because that's what the NFL wants and that's what offenses one, and that's why you're paying quarterbacks the amount of money you're paying them. This year, I think the conversation is, there's only a few offenses that we think are going to be able to go. Dolphins are one of them, because yeah. of the amount of weapons that they have. So congrats to the Dolphins. Bills mm -hmm. are another one of them. This Chiefs team, yeah. man, when they needed it. And everybody talks about how and AJ picked the Chargers because how good the Chargers play the Chiefs, and that was the point. That was evident yet again last mm -hmm. night. And shout out to the Chargers having a fucking great game. Now, two minutes left in the game. The way you go about scoring there and thinking about Patrick Mahomes on the other side, you're down four. It's a it's whole or down three. It's a whole it's a whole situation there. And who knows if you could take things back, you score that quick. And did the Chiefs let them score that quick? And they we're happy they scored that quick. Who knows? They're in field goal range. You do your thing. You have to score. Not taking a shot at Staley at all. Just saying interesting situation for them to end up in, for us to have to talk about, because you give Patrick Mahomes that mm -hmm. much time to come back. You obviously know at this stage of his career, at this stage of life, Patrick Mahomes is going to make plays. Not only running, obviously, but the dude he's got playing tight end for him in Travis Kelsey is the best football player on any field that he's ever walked onto. Now, he's high-stepping on one time 
touchdown. This one, he's breaking tackles and skirting into the end zone. But they go up four after the extra point is kicked there late in the game to beat a division rival. But Travis Kelsey is fucking unguardable. Yeah. He's unstoppable. <laughs> and whenever they need it and got to have it, and we're getting to that point of the season, look at this high step. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. The picture that he has, he posted on his IG story, and he, the caption he put on there is high stepper. It is so head up, full – Dude's a dog. Okay? Yes. I think he's 35 or 33 years old having his – look at that pause right there. I mean, that last – right where you had it is fucking a poster. It is an absolute poster uh, that will be had everywhere. He's unbelievable. We're getting to the point of the season where you're going to see Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. Yep. We're getting – we saw it there in the last drive, and obviously it happens all the time. It does not matter who's on the team. When Tyreek Hill was on the team, if there was a fourth and 15 that they needed to get in a must-have, it was going to 87. If they had to go down in a two-point – or in a two-minute drill to catch up or less than that, it was going to be Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey. If we all heard the mic'd up situation where Travis tells Patrick Mahomes, hey, if they line up like that again, instead of coming underneath, I'm just going to kind of drift up the field, should be wide open, and then boom, in the biggest moment, of the season in the championship game. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey are on the same exact page. His football IQ seems to be higher than everybody else's. Him and Patrick seem to be on a better page than anybody else in the NFL right now. It is a joy to watch those motherfuckers play football. And Chargers fans were just sitting there knowing what was about to happen to them whenever they score with a minute 40 left on the clock. He's up to 11 receiving touchdowns this season, tied for the most in his career. He's on pace for a career high in catches, yards, and touchdowns this season. He's 33 years old, uh, and he now has 33 games with 100-plus yards or more, which is more than everybody who broke Gronkowski's record. He's going to go down as statistically greatest tight end of all time. Yep. There will be a convo about if Gronkowski wanted to, he could continue playing and done his whole thing. He didn't, right? He mm -hmm. didn't do that. Travis Kelsey played through bad times at the Chiefs. Then Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid get there, and it's a whole new world, and he is a pivotal part of it. And his New Heights podcast with his brother Jason is fucking unbelievable. Jason Kelsey, Jalen Hurts, mm. third and one, third and one and a half. Mm -hmm. Unstoppable. Yeah. Give him the first. We watched it live yesterday. Mm -hmm. Un, you're not going to get lower than Kelsey. Nope. He's 270 pounds or whatever, and he's nimble. Former running back. He's able to get under anybody, and he seems to have better balance than everybody, and he's just running straight ahead. Impossible to stop. Jalen Hurts also, he knows the deal. He'll, he'll line up as if they're going to run that, and everybody thinks they're going to run it, and then he pulls out. Like, Jalen yeah. is – Jalen's football IQ, very, very – now this is the biggest play. I can't – Got to get a stop for Fourth it, too. We had the game. We had the game. It was a win. They had one timeout. <clears throat> I mean, maybe we have to punt it, and they have 15 seconds to end it, and they got to do some sort of shot. Him cutting, making this play is huge. But that whole quarterback sneak with Jason Kelsey playing center, unguardable, unstoppable, and a lot of fun to watch. Nonetheless, uh, this is wide open. Travis Kelsey, still the best player on any football field he walks into. Happy he's gotten back into the end zone a few times because he did have like a three-week hiatus yep. mm -hmm. from the end zone where we thought he was maybe dead. Well, and, and the thing is, like with Kelsey yesterday, uh, Juju's out. I believe they have two other wide receivers out. Um, and then, like, on the other side is Derwin James, who's supposed to be the Kelsey stopper or whatever, and then he goes off and does that. Um, yeah, he's the, the guy's unstoppable at this point. You're not gonna, you can't like you can do whatever you want. It's not gonna happen. Well, and they added to their offense. Like <laughs> Hardman was out too, like Tony said, and you know Tony ended up going out. I don't know first, second quarter, but like Isaiah Pacheco. H how many times does a team lose a guy like Tyreek Hill and then take that same exact number and put it on the <laughs> fastest running back probably in the NFL? How about him high stepping through that hole? It was after he did something wrong and then he busted through and he started high stepping through. I'm like, God damn, how they get somebody this explosive again? Yeah. They find the – that's a good scouting trait that the oh, Chiefs have found. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, who's explosive? Who's a home run hitter? Who can make something out of nothing? Seems like Pacheco is that guy. He did something last night, though. Fumble or something? No. Uh, McKinnon fumbled yeah, yeah. McKinnon got at the end of the game. Behind. Yeah, yeah. Pacheco did something, I thought. And then they go right back to him, and he fucking dances through. Nonetheless, <laughs> yeah. the Chiefs are fun to watch. Chargers. Are the Chargers – I mean, I'm just – No, I, th I mean, I said it last week. I think they are just pretenders. Like, it just stinks because Herbert's so good. and We like Herbert. Yeah, yeah. love, love Herbert. Herbert. He, I mean, he's a dog for sure. Love him. But it One just, in five dogs. Mm -hmm. They just – they're five and five. It feels like they're three and seven. Like, and I don't know what it is. It's just like it, you look at them, and I guess part of that too is, is the Chiefs in their division. But just 
it, it's tough to imagine anyone beating the, the Chiefs. Like you look at other teams who have good offenses and who you know have played really well, but like. I don't think... You're saying in the end, for yeah, the it, division. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about an overall record because the Colts beat the Chiefs. Like, Chiefs have lost games in the se- regular sure. season before, but in the end, it feels like who's going to be the team that wins the most? Who's going to be the team that's going to be able to go on the run? The AFC West was supposed to be a problem. Remember, they're talking about getting Hackett. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Already. They're already talking about Hackett. They're talking about, hey, welcome to head coaching in the NFL. Uh, we have the richest owner who did not hire you. He just paid the quarterback 200 and some million. If one of you don't win, who do you think is going to fall on? Oh, first year head coaching? No year's head coaching. Goodbye. They're talking about running him out of town there. Raiders, what, four and seven? Three, three and seven. Three they and were, seven. They were two and seven going into that game. They're three and seven. They're not good at all. No. They get a big time win. Devontae mm-hmm. Adams has obviously a huge touchdown to end it where he then says after the game that Patrick Sertain Jr. is not him yet. Mm-hmm. He's too young. He's too young. He's not there yet, I believe, is exactly what Devontae Adams said after a wide-open, awesome touchdown, which I would assume if Devontae was to break down this route, he had Patrick Sertain flip his hips, lose his leverage, and then the whole entire field was open. Devontae would probably say, if you were to ask him after watching everything DB and learn a little bit more about football, that Patrick Sertain probably had the right leverage in what he thought, and then he, boom, cuts it back out yes. like one of those cross plays, and it's wide open. Devontae probably set that up we would assume, yeah, yeah. as did Carr and McDaniels through the whole thing, to take advantage of one of the best corners in the game, Patrick Stain Jr., to get a massive win. But they're not in it. They're no. already out of it. Their mm-hmm. record 3-7, and seven, they're already out of it. Broncos, already out of yes. it. That AFC West is supposed to be something that we're all fa- afraid of. They are not. Now, what will it look like next year? Is Hackett going to be gone? Is Staley, if they don't make the playoffs again, Man. is he, what's going to happen? What's going to happen with him? McDaniels, they're saying that they can't fire him because Mark Davis doesn't have enough money to fire him. Yeah. Can't even hire a new guy. Anytime that's being said about your program, not good. Yikes. Anytime it's like understood, like, yeah, they would fire this guy. They can't afford it. What do you mean they can't afford it? Yeah, they don't have the funds actually to fire him because then they would have to pay another coach and him, and they just don't have that on the books for the next 10 to 15 years. It's like that's – the AFC West is now all of a sudden Salal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just complete mm-hmm. Salal. And we thought it was going to be good. It might look completely different next year, which brings to the point, this Chiefs team – is never going to die. No. This Chiefs team, the way it's built, if Travis Kelsey's going to continue to play and he's taking, you know, restructures yeah. of contracts to take signing bonus to get less money and get the cap hit smaller, anytime somebody that isn't your quarterback is already doing that, that's good news. Quarterback probably going to get a restructured contract here with what, you know, the money has gone to, mm-hmm. especially if they go on to do what we think they're going to do this year, which is mm-hmm. a very deep run the Chiefs are going to be able to do. It's fascinating how some of the teams going into the season, what we thought, and then where we lie here at November 21st and what the future looks like for them. Like the Rams. Oh, yeah, man. They're, they're dead. I gave a speech on Friday about the Rams, and I said, hey, boys, I'm a big fan. We don't know any of you. We have zero relationship with your entire squad, <clears throat> which doesn't make a lot of sense. Might be indicative of what's going on right now. A little bit. Should have seen it coming. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a relationship with any of them. PR person we've talked about. Yeah, many times. Bottom three in the league in relationships. Bottom two, in, mm-hmm. probably bottom one yeah. in the league. Bottom two, no When two. it comes to relationships with us. Just completely big dog dust. Uh, you know, in, I'm not the right person to, you know, after you, you know, big dog us to go back. And say, oh, you're right. And then just continue the thing. I'm a big like, oh, fuck me once. Okay, mm-hmm. fuck you forever then. Mm-hmm. That is kind of how I – I'm going to have to get past that as I grow older, mm-hmm. I think, is what I've been told. And I think I have done that in numerous cases now, so I'm kind of maturing, evolving. But we have no relationship with that Rams team, like the Rams. I've always liked this Rams team, though, strictly because they have all the traits of something that I love. I love when people are talented, and I love when people know they're talented, and when they go all the fuck in. I like whenever people decide to invest in what they have. I like when people – you know, acknowledge the moment and then take advantage of the moment. The Rams had done that. They had the players. What do we need? We need a better quarterback. Even though Jared Goff is going to lead the Lions to three straight wins in 2022, we need a Super Bowl winning quarterback. They bring in Detroit Lions, Matthew Stafford, out of a Cabo vacation with McVay right into the Rams. They invest. They bring in Odell Beckham Jr. Give us Vaughn Miller. They know that they have the team to do it, and they fucking go and do it. Then everybody comes back, except for Vaughn Miller, who gets paid $107 million to the Bills. Still have it, still got it. Yeah. Everybody comes back. We're going to run this again. We're going to do this again. I was pumped for them because they're showing that that, you know, that way of building a team is not just for one year. It's not a one-hit wonder. You can have sustained success because everybody goes like, oh, well, they're fucked for the future. They're fucked for the future. It's like, well, what if they're not? 
And what is the future? If they win the next three out of four or four out of five, is that a far enough in the future thinking for you to build your roster and how you can construct a team in the NFL? But instead, they've just fucking laid an egg. Yeah. They are not good, whatever the reason is. They've lost it. They lose to the Saints just yesterday. But even throughout the season, they didn't look like a team that cared. They didn't look a team that had any ability. They look like a team that got a Super Bowl ring, got money, legacies were made, and now it's just let's ride this out mm -hmm. for another year and maybe take a paycheck, which makes no sense because Aaron Donald was retired yep. and then chose to come back because he wants to win a Super Bowl. And I'm not saying that's Aaron Donald. I'm just saying the team as a whole has just not looked anything like what any of us expected it to. They're dead. Yeah. Dead. And, and they might they might blow up. Yeah. yeah. That team might get blown up. And they got no picks because they have no picks going forward because they went all in, which I love. But now they have zero draft capital to make any moves if they end up firing the coach or if McVay ends up leaving because McVay said he's only around for as long as everybody's. Matthew Stafford gets another concussion issue. I don't know if you heard after the first one, his wife is not happy. He has a Super Bowl ring. He has a lot of fucking money, Matthew mm -hmm. Stafford. Family. You think – is he just – so he's coming back next year? We just assume he's coming back next year? Just the human is coming back next year? Okay. Jalen Ramsey has a lot of money, a lot of success, mm -hmm. has a Super Bowl ring, has fame, has everything that you could possibly want. Is he going to come back and be all in on the Rams next year? Maybe. Does that mean that McVay and the offense are going to be able to do the same exact thing as they were doing this year for Ramsey to be as happy as he was with the offense he was a year before? Maybe. It's staring down. Oh, Rams might be dead, dead. Oh, yeah. Coming around the bend, bend. And that might be there soon. And it's like, I could have never guessed that just 10 weeks ago, five weeks ago, six weeks ago. But now we're at a point where it's like, what do the Rams look like going forward? What does the AFC West look like going forward? What does the NFC West look like yeah. going forward? Kyler Murray not playing. What if the Cardinals look better again tonight? Yeah. Mm. It, just, it is insane to think where we are right now as opposed to where we were at the beginning of the season with expectation, thoughts, and hopes, and where we are now. It's crazy. It's been a wild fucking NFL season this year. Yeah, the Rams is like a laundry list of like th stuff we thought maybe would happen two to three years from now, but you mentioned it. Stafford, I mean, you get concussions back-to-back -back games, and like the, you see the way things are going right now. It's tough to imagine him especially with how bad their O-line's been, him signing up to come back next year. And, you know, they, they were thinking that, hey, we'll trade these picks because it's not going to matter. If we don't win a Super Bowl, it's going to be a 28 or a 29 or a 30. Like, they're giving the Lions, like, a top five, top ten pick now. And really, I mean, if they do have to blow everything up, like McVay talked about the core and kind of being done when they're not there, the easiest way to kind of climb out of this would be to trade guys like Ramsey and maybe Cooper Cup and get some of that draft capital back because otherwise you are staring down. It's crazy. Just, hey, we like, you know, and, and did it work? Yeah, it did because they won a Super Bowl in their home stadium and. You know, a lot of people would probably say, like, hey, that was that was the goal. But now, like, you're – I mean, they do have to start thinking, you know, the next five, ten years. You can't just win a Super Bowl and then after that just be, like, the doormat of the NFL for the next five to ten years. Joining us now is a man who might have more information on all of this, a uh, guy who is the senior NFL insider for the NFL itself, the league, and the league's website. Mm -hmm. Host shit. of the weekly wrap-up with Rap Sheet and Friends, although it hasn't been weekly because no. have not been able to fit into his busy schedule because he's on tailgate mania, right. mm -hmm. and then he's obviously on NFL, yeah. NFL Plus. New he's got show. a podcast yeah. now <laughs> with uh, Pelissero and, and Garofalo called The Insiders, which we will obviously listen to. They're wearing T-shirts while they're Whoa. doing it. What? Yeah. Laid back. It's a good show. Get it's funny jokes. Back. All people we like. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Yeah, yeah we – um. Well, a couple things. First of all, we wear sleeves on our show. Oh. 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 I get it. I get Not it. a shot. Just literally reality. The other thing is um, I had a lot of time last week. I was just waiting here, sitting like this. Camera's over here, but I'm sitting crossways waiting for you guys to call. Just never called. So it was a tough. It was a tough week, but I'm glad we're back. Well, busy week. You know, we we're preparing yeah. for Montana. I went out sure. to Montana. That's a place you probably love, huh? Uh, that looked amazing, by the way. There, yeah, exactly. You're the type of people though, that the Montanans don't want in there. Just want to let you know that. That's what I've been told. Hey, tell those city slickers you like you guys ski and everything. Tell them to stay the fuck out of our state. Yeah. Now that's not everybody in Montana. I'm just saying the yeah, select the real dudes. fifty yeah. to sixty people that I talked to all had the same <laughs> all had the same exact thoughts. Uh, I don't know if Sir Nick Faldo was necessarily beloved as a uh, as a Montanan sure. representative either, but he Come loves on. the state. He <laughs> loves the state. He lived there. It was awesome to meet a Sir, somebody that had been knighted. Sure. Mm -hmm. That was cool to chat with him. 
Uh, but last week was a busy week. We apologize. We're very thankful you're joining us here today. We just talked about the Rams and how expectations going into the season. Aaron Donald comes out of retirement. Let's go run this again. Sean McVay turns down $20 million allegedly from yeah. Amazon to call games because he's stuck to Stafford and Cup and Donald and Ramsey, that core group of dudes that he wants to continue to win with. They're all back. Are we looking at a, a full rebuild, do you think, this upcoming offseason with how terrible things have gone? Like Stafford, back-to-back -back concussions now. I assume the human Stafford with kids and a wife life and everything at this point with a Super Bowl ring and money. There's going to be those types of thoughts. Are we wrong in thinking that the Rams might be dead in its, on its overreaction Monday? I think you're wrong on the first part, but I'll get to that in a second. The Stafford as a human part, I think, is a really good point. Because, you know, one of the, the best ways to understand the NFL and understand these guys we cover is that these are regular humans, right? Literally human beings. So when Stafford gets a concussion, most of us are kind of like breaking, uh, by the way, what? breaking, <laughs> Oh my God. breaking uh, that I they're robots. Ian Rappaport, an insider for the NFL who has literally just, you know, the way he has, you know, said some things mm -hmm. and said, these are humans. Okay, good. This is good. I'm happy know. everybody's Here's realizing that. This is good. I, I didn't break it, but I confirmed it. Um, <laughs> according to your sources. Um, yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, according to my sources, yes. Um, so, you know, he gets a concussion. We're like, all right, well, I won't start him in fantasy. Meanwhile, he's got a wife who takes this very seriously. He's got kids. He's won a Super Bowl. So if you said to me, like, you know, would you bet your life on Stafford being back? I would say every veteran who's like 35 or whatever has a decision to make at the end of the year. What do they want to do? And I don't know what his decision is going to be. Um, I think he'll be back, but I don't know. And I think the health of the team overall goes into it. I think they're going to be okay, though. But I will say this, because, yes, they mortgage all the draft picks, but they have more. Every year they get more. So they don't have a draft pick in Agreed. twenty first round in 2024, but they have 2025. Oh, yeah, and they have you know, money they could spend. So like I think they are constantly going to reload and keep pushing and keep pushing and keep going all in until they literally can't anymore, I think this is just going to be what they are going to do going forward. Okay, I'm excited to see what kind of happens. And they have a rich owner, so they ha can do the cash over cap forever. And I do yeah. like the point because I'm a big bring in free agents and uh, vets guy. These draft picks grow on trees, That's literally. Right. Just they'll grow. You get, next year, you'll get another set of them that you can give away. That's what they get. It's good. Yeah. That's a good point. All right, let's move on to tonight's game. Uh, Colt McCoy at Texas Beauty is starting for the Cardinals. Cardinals offense obviously looked much better when he was in as opposed to when Kyler was in for – it did. It did. I Come know. I, I'm did. watching it too, and you can see the way the guys relate to him on the side, and they like him – Anyway, go ahead. It's, it's very strange. It uh, is very strange. That's another team we don't have. Uh, we, we know the people on that team, but the PR person, obviously, interesting. The bottom quartile of the bottom yeah, quartile there it of, is. of the teams of that PR person over there with the Cardinals. So I'm not saying from a point of view that I know anything over there. I think you do, though, uh, if I do recall from, oh, some, yeah. oh, from yeah. some conversations that have happened in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. what, did you know that Kyler wasn't playing this week? They said they had known. And if Colt gets another win, especially against the Niners, now it's going to be a tough one. The Niners mm -hmm. are going to be difficult, especially in Mexico. Thin air. I mean, that Niners team could, could run them out of the gym. I'm not saying they're going to run them, but could uh, potentially do that tonight. If they get another win, is there a controversy? No way, right? Because of how much money they paid Kyler, that that would never happen at this stage of the game. No controversy. Kyler's going to be the starting quarterback. But I saw what you did, which is Colt is a leader. Like if you watch the Hard Knock stuff, like he seems to be a dude that people love. And like, do they play one percent harder for him? I don't. I, I you can never tell that kind of stuff, but it looks like they play well with him in there. And he does see that like attention to detail he has, where he's like. Asking guys like, hey, do you want this like on the outside of your left shoulder? Like that's like real veteran stuff that I NFL think quarterback. maybe hopefully right. I think maybe hopefully Kyler would get there, but it doesn't seem like he's there now. Um I do not I mean maybe I'm crazy, but I do not think that the 49ers will run them out of this thing. I think it'll Me be either. a really good game. Me too. And yes. like you know, plus it's these international games are kind of odd, just a different setting, you know, so like I would say I think they're going to be – I think they're going to be okay, and I think they're going to play well, and then Kyler will go back, and then, God forbid, he loses after he comes back from injury, then we'll have a whole thing, other thing to talk about. Yeah, that's what I – I had to say that the Niners could because the Niners technically could. If you look at their roster with how they're playing, adding Christian McCaffrey, the team has been they, – They are everybody's favorite right now. Oh, my God. 
Yes, me too. Like, we love – I love mm -hmm. that they went all in. I like that they traded and got yeah. Christian yeah. McCaffrey. To go back to what I was talking about earlier about the Rams team and them falling apart, like, I love what the Niners uh, did that whole thing. But if, if Colt plays well and they do great – Oh, boy, it's going to get loud in the desert. I, uh, I can't wait I for it. Connor, your question for Ian. Yeah, Rab Sheet, after yesterday's performance by the Cowboys and then also by the Giants, is it safe to assume that we can kind of book Odell Beckham going to Dallas and he's going to be wearing number three with the star on his helmet this year? I would say, judging from the kind of talking to everyone involved and trying to figure out where he's going, my sense is there's a little more men momentum toward the Cowboys than the Giants. I think he has very publicly flirted with them. They have leaned in so hard. Our guy, Jerry Jones, can't say the words Odell Beckham enough. Just every time he's asked about something, he'll be like, how's Zeke's knee? He'll be like, let's talk about Odell. They just, there's a lot there. And when he visits the Cowboys after Thanksgiving, and it sounds like he's got a visit with the Giants too, but like when he visits the Cowboys, there is a chance that he just visits and stays. Like, They've had conversations. They've checked in on his health. They've been very, 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 very attentive. There's a lot to like here. And I think, Dude, you know, they're good team. anyway, oh. but I think he would really, really help them. Especially with what they started doing with Tony Pollard out of the backfield. Yeah. So yeah. now you can also get Zeke, who ran hard yesterday, ran his ass off, which I think people he forget did. about what Zeke brings to the table mm -hmm. that necessarily some other people can't. But with what they were able to do with Tony out of the backfield, and then you add Odell Beckham Jr. in there as well, with Zeke still doing his thing. <laughs> and, I mean, Dak – are the Cowboys legit? Hey, out. are the Cowboys legit right now? Is that what we're talking about? Are we talking about OBJ's picking his team because he thinks that they can win a Super Bowl? Yeah. Is OBJ out of his mind for yes. thinking this? I don't think so. I don't think so at no all. After what we've seen. Are we being lied to again by the Cowboys? Are we about to fall into this trap for another season? Or is this for real, you think, Ian? I did the same thing last year. I think they're really good. Really, personnel-wise, they are among the top teams in the NFL. I think they are really good. I thought so last year, too. And then they get to the playoffs and, like, you know, I watched the Nickelodeon game when they were on last year, so it wasn't total. I didn't get a total good feel. But anyway, they lost, uh, and it was bad. Um, I think they are real. And what I think is interesting is – It was hard to get a good feel? Hey, yeah. was it hard to get a good feel with all the slime being shot over? Yeah, the slime. You got the, the slime cartoons. Zone. You got the sounds. <laughs> Like, I love, it seems I'm bad, but I don't know. I'm having a pretty good time. Yeah, it's awesome. a lot of, I mean, I enjoy the Nickelodeon. Side note, I did a thing with Nickelodeon uh, last year. They sent five gallons of slime to my house. I got slimed. And I still have four gallons of slime randomly in my garage. If you guys want to come over, feel okay. free to get slime. Okay, yes. sweet. How come you haven't utilized your nepotism badge and get Max a job with Nickelodeon like everybody else That's has? That's a great point. Mm. Yeah, I thought about that. I just don't trust him in front of the microphone because as your viewers <laughs> no. can attest, yeah. He will literally say whatever. He this kid's says good, what's this on his mind and God. Good TV. Yeah. So let's use nepotism there. for good sometime. Yeah. Let's get this guy in there. Okay, let's let's get the the wide open. T how old is he? How old is Max? Ah, oh, there we go. Max and Jude right there, Max right? Is not. Fresh cuts. Which one's which? Max on the right, Jude Max, on the left? Max is on the, Max is on the right, Jude is on the left, yeah. Sick he's got, hair. He, yeah, sweet. He's got hair watch. for TV. I mean, that's great hair, but. Look at, look at you getting slimed. Oh, Ian, oh, you did. Oh, oh, Ian, oh, you got slimed. Oh, dude, I got slimed. Oh, my God. It was so gross. I could not have showered fast enough. It was so gross. So uh, gross. Okay, well, I'm happy we all have kind of bought into the Cowboys hype. Let's go to Ty Schmidt, owner of the Packers team that beat the Pack or beat the Cowboys literally two weeks ago. Uh, Ty, your question for Ian Rappaport. Yeah, unbelievable to think <laughs> about that. Rap Sheet, we were talking a little bit before you got on about Nathaniel Hackett's seat potentially getting hot. Is there really a chance that he would get fired at either before the end of the season or after? And are there any other guys that are potentially on the hot seat right now? I would be really surprised from what I know now if he was fired during the season. I just, like, I don't know the point of it. You know, it's not like you're looking to, like, catch a spark or, like, Broncos season, I think, at this point is what it is. Maybe they can turn it around somehow, but they've tried all of the things. They tried a new play caller yeah. yesterday. Didn't work. Is he dead? Not good. Whoa. Is Hackett? Didn't call uh -oh. plays yesterday either. I, I don't know, but it's not looking great. Oh, I mean, look, it's a long year. season. We've seen teams turn it around, but like, he is one of the best guys, and I think he's trying very hard to do it the right way. But quarterback's not playing great. Offense isn't looking great. Defense is balling. But 
we'll see how it ends, but I think it's a little tenuous, yes. Okay, let's stay in that division here a little bit. Staley, if they have another year in which it appears as if going into, they're going to be fantastic, going to be fantastic, and then for one reason or another, and I'm not saying they played bad last night, it's the Chiefs. They end up losing, though, primetime television at home, yeah. and now they're 500, and then who knows what the rest of the season looks like. If they don't make the playoffs again, is there what, what, what happens there? Just another let's reload it, let's go for another one, because ownership has spent a lot of money. Right? Yeah. Ownership has spent a lot of money. There's been numerous years now, three of them. This is going to be the third one if Herbert and the boys don't make the playoffs, where Herbert has proven to be a great quarterback, proven to be a guy that could be a guy, but zero playoff appearances. And he's just starting to look eerily similar to what it used to look like in that other city, San Diego, for them. Like, what is the hopes, realistic expectations, and what the future looks like for the Chargers right now? That division is a massive question mark right now. Can't fire McDaniels because of money reasons, right? Allegedly in Las Vegas. No, they. They're not going to the money's that, that was wrong. The money's fine. Oh, They're not oh. gonna fire him, but breaking, nice. breaking, yeah. breaking, breaking. Okay, because that whole division, if you think Hackett maybe first year, not even gonna make it, then the Raiders allegedly, the false report we're hearing now, right? False report mm -hmm. was that they would have got rid of McDaniels or will get rid yeah. of McDaniels if they could afford it. They can't afford paying him and another coach. Allegedly there's the IRS is involved in a whatever. There's a lot going on over there. You're saying that's fake? Okay, that's big news. And then how about the Chargers? What's going to happen there, you think, going forward? I think they are really talented. And the quarterback is really, really talented. So that is amazing, and, and it's great. Yeah. And yeah. it is a curse, too, because I think everyone watches the Chargers, and you're like, this is a playoff team, except they're 5-5, five and five, right? And they did spend a lot of money. It wasn't like all in, but for the Chargers, they spent a lot of money. J.C. Jackson is out for the season. There's, there's a lot there. So I would say if it goes badly, that would be one of the jobs that we are watching. Um, I think he's a bright young coach. I think everyone agrees that there's a lot, a lot, a lot of potential there. But your results are what they are. And, like, I think they're going to be a playoff team. Um, and the roster should be, but I think they'll take a look at it after the season if they're not. So that's a Sean Payton, right? You would think Sean Payton mm -hmm. maybe would go there. And is Sean Payton looking to be GM and coach in your eyes, or what do you think he's looking for to potentially take a new job? I mean, he lives in L.A. I think he likes L.A. Seems to be having a great time on the uh, TV set, Justin. hanging out with Schrager and others. Uh, I would say, yeah, there's, there's definitely some ties there. I think that's possible. Um, I don't think he wants to be GM. I don't. Uh, I think what he would want is to know that the GM who would come with him would be extremely competent. So you're talking like, you know, him and Mickey Loomis had a great relationship. He's got a good relationship with Ryan Pace, who's in Atlanta now. So, like, if Peyton got a job, bringing Pace along, I think, would make some oh, sense. That's a good idea. Um, and, you know, so anyway, a lot of time for wherever that is, but I would say that would be at least something to watch if the Chargers don't make the playoffs, which they should. Interesting, man. It's fascinating because here we are November 21st. Happy Thanksgiving week to everybody already. We're going into week 12. Yeah. Week 11's wrapping. We're going into week 12. Oh, yeah. Let's remember no. that. Let's enjoy it. But honestly, things are a lot different now than they were in week three for a lot of different programs in the future. Massive question mark. La last question for you here, Ian. I know you got to get out of here. Go ahead, Tony. Ian, we were talking about offenses that can win the Super Bowl, and we, I think the Bengals are one of those uh, if they're healthy. what's Is Jamar Chase going to be back anytime soon? And what happened to Joe Mixon yesterday? Uh, Joe Mixon in the concussion protocol, he – I cannot believe how good of a player Joe Mixon has become. I hate to say this, but like I didn't expect he's been awesome. Um, now, Samaj P. Ryan going in and being a superstar himself was also unexpected. So, um, Jamar Chase, he's got a hip injury. It's a sort of a labral pull slash tear. It was supposed to be four to six weeks. We're a little past four. He's no longer on crutches, and I think there's a chance he practices this week. His last doctor's appointment was really positive. So he's coming, whether it's this week, next week, he's coming, and I think he'll be available uh, kind of down the home stretch for them, which is, I mean, they look kind of loaded too. So I would say to me, like, they seem like a team that would catch fire as well. What do you think about the Chiefs? And it was going to be the last question, but I see that we have like okay. another minute or so. The, the Chiefs, what do you, they're going to restructure – Patrick Mahomes' contract, you think, after this season to keep this thing going as long as possible? And how many injuries can they afford? Like, it feels like they can just withstand whatever. feels like they're at a max point right now. What's up with Tony? What's up with a couple other guys? When are people coming back? Are the Chiefs are going to be full go? And what do you think they do looking ahead? I don't think anybody's full go. But I, I think I mean, as long as the quarterback's good, I think they're going to be great. Um, they do seem like someone that can – talk about the Rams. Like, Chiefs feel like someone that could sustain forever. 
I think so like, too. They don't have to touch Mahomes' contract. They may if it makes sense. It's not like they need to create cap space. They, it is like beautifully structured from a team perspective. So I think they could not touch it and be fine. So at, well. at injuries, Clyde edwards helaire is a high ankle. Um, so that's usually four to six. Now Pacheco ran great, so maybe that's not a big deal. Uh, Kadarius Tony seems like more of a mild hamstring strain than a serious one. But hamstring, he's dealt with in the past. Figure he'll miss some time. But you're right. I feel like the Chiefs are going to be fine no matter what. You just coast on to the playoffs, win a bunch of games, get everyone you can for ja- middle of January, and just roll from there. You know? every, every team should try to do that. Get a Patrick Mahomes, get a Travis Kelsey, yeah. Yeah, okay. and then just figure it out. Here we go. Seems like Kelsey that's the is, thing. Kelsey is comically good. So mm. much so much smarter and better than everybody, and tougher because he's an Ohio fuck. Mm-hmm. It's just like it is. Perfect combo. He's kind of like Vrabel as a tight end, it feels like. Yeah. That's what he is right now. It's um, um, Hey, one thing I wanted to mention, I tweeted it before we got on, but I did want to talk about it because uh, I didn't want you to – I don't want to – do the show and not mention Kyle Pitts, the Falcons standout tight end, is going to be uh, having surgery on his MCL and is going to be out indefinitely. Um, I did not want to not talk about that since I tweeted it right before, but obviously one of the game's bright stars and, uh, you know, a darling in fantasy as well. I know everyone's expecting big things. Very, very difficult end of the season for Kyle Pitts this year, so I wanted to mention that as well. Yeah, rough year, I think, for Kyle Pitts statistically, but mm-hmm. that Falcons team – is seemingly just winning games. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they're going to they're gonna either ruin hopes here late or they're going to sneak somehow. The fa- If Artie Smith is able to get that squad in, we're going to be talking about old FedEx son in a much different light, yeah. I think, next offseason. He's pretty good, man. He's pretty awesome. good. Hey, they're dogs down there. Good. They're dogs down there. Godspeed to Kyle Pitts. We hope to come back healthy and better than ever. Uh, Ian, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you on always. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rap Sheet, Ian Rappaport. Hey. Hey. How come nepotism won't give us his kid? Yeah. Good question. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's so entertaining, too. We get it everywhere else. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bullshit. Makes no sense. Right. What's that all about? I don't know. You give us insider insider. I was thinking about this, and Whoa. obviously it's not the kids of people's fault, right? Like, it's not your fault that you were introduced to the person that hires these people when you were, like, 12 years old. Like, it's, it's certainly something, and business is always connections and everything like that. That's a lot of pressure, though, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, you just kind of get tossed in there. And I wonder if you just don't feel it because of your last name and how you've had to grow up in it, whatever. But also, everybody is rooting for you to fail. For mm-hmm. sure. And like, if, and rooting. if you don't crush it from the get-go, like all these kids who grew up on Twitter, like, you're seeing that. You yes. Know? We are root- there, there's people rooting for their failure. Oh, yeah. Loudly. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's like, I'm happy that my dad was not in TV business. <laughs> exactly. If I would have got into trucking, or any of the wood business or anything like that, the pressure would have been very high. But since it's on TV, I'm okay. But I, I like I saw Jack Collinsworth on last night. Yeah. And then I saw some pictures of like him and Jason Garrett calling those Notre Dame games. And I'm like, Jason Garrett's never fucking called a game before. What Jack just Jack just knows because Jack hung around Al Michaels for a long time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He yeah. just knows how to call a game. It's like I'm sure Jack has those thoughts too, where it's like. All right, kind of an interesting spot getting the fucking Notre Dame game. Yeah. Never really did this before. Toss it in there. And what's he supposed to say? No, I guess. But, like, yeah. every time he's on TV, I like to look, see what people are saying in the focus group. That is, Twitter's still alive. What? Unbelievably. Really? How? Twitter's still working. What's that about? I don't know. Last stand, I assume. Oh, just, like, yeah. the yeah. power yeah. is running out. Right, mm-hmm. like almost through Thanksgiving and then dead. Yeah. Is that what everybody was saying? Because I, I didn't uh, think – I thought they said it wouldn't no, make yeah. it. We weren't even supposed to make it to today. Today, we were done last we were night, done, yeah. midnight. Yeah, midnight last night was supposed to be – just No today. more Twitter. Yeah. yeah. The bird – chirp, chirp. Yeah, exactly. And it actually, you open the app, and it's just the duck hunting game. Yeah. Oh. With the Twitter bird going like this, and then somebody – poof. Yeah. And then it <laughs> – And then they have And then a little dog pops up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought it was going to be. Turns out it's still around. Whoa. How's that Crazy. Around? Wow. Don't get oh. your hopes up too much, though. I mean, I, we, I, they must have just pushed the deadline back to, like, Thursday or something. Yeah. Oh, because the World Cup? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. They wanted us to be able to enjoy the USA game today and then. World Cup's going well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the World Cup's going real well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Treat the fans to one hell of an experience. Doing a really good job. You be showing a yellow card, you wear that fucking armband in this, do in this country. Don't, don't, don't do you it. fucking dare. There was, a, there was an armband that seven European countries c- 
captains were going to, it was going to be their captain band, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was going to be a rainbow one, obviously, to show support of the LGBTQ community in a game being played in Qatar, uh, which I don't think shows a lot of, I don't no. think they show a lot of support no, no, no. to that community no, at no, all. I don't. I don't think they showed it at all. So they were going to do that. And then FIFA told them, hey, please. We'll give you a yellow card before the game even starts. Right away. You accidentally trip somebody later, red card, you're down a person. Yeah. You put that you put that armband on. So FIFA is like, uh, we think it's uh, worthy to be punished if you do that. Well, is it really you or is it Qatar? Well. Take the fucking armband off. <laughs> let's just. Don't worry I, about we're it. We're not sure. <laughs> but Budweiser pays $75 million. We're not even allowed to, Okay. Yeah. Please. Don't you even think about drinking a fucking beer. In yeah, yeah. You're three hours. You guys can't drink a beer. What is your problem? Oh, boo-hoo. Boo-hoo is what the FIFA person yeah. said. Yeah. Who is. Uh, He's everything. Yeah. FIFA choosing. Today I am in a. Today I am an Arab person. I am a, uh, I'm a gay person. I'm a woman. African. I'm a man. I'm an African. I am disabled. I am a disabled person. I am also the person that they just killed in the streets. Yeah, that guy, the fan from Ecuador. Well, yeah, they strung him up. I'm this. also a very rich man because they grease my pockets. Yes, he, yeah. he left that part out, but this World Cup is a shit show. Yeah. Shit show. It is an absolute shit show, and it hasn't even started. America kicks off though in a minute or an hour and four minutes. Notice, sorry about it, Wales. We're beating your ass at two. Sorry about today. it. Okay. Hell yeah. That's right. Sorry about it, Wales. This is not, this is nothing personal. No. Okay, Wales. We're sure you're a fantastic place. Yeah. A fantastic country filled with impeccable human beings. Yeah. Love mm -hmm. Gareth Bale. Shit, love him. Christian Bale. Love him. Love that love one him. too. Love all of all love the Bales all over the Bales. there uh -huh. in the Wales. Love all the Wales. Today, you happen to be. It is a damn shame, and it's probably not how your country has been described in the past by people that you like. And we hope we can remain a good relationship. Today, you are a fucking speed bump, okay? Sorry. At the very beginning of our road to the soccer Lombardi that's coming back home oh, for the yeah. first time to the United States of America. Woo! Sorry about it, Wales. Christian Pulisic was like plus 320 to score a goal today. Is this the fucking soccer Lombardi? Oh, yeah, what yeah. The hell? Is Christian Pulisic the best soccer player on earth? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Plus 320, we're stealing from FanDuel right now. But what a fucking joke. Hey, congrats to Wales, though, being able to say forever that you were the first team that had to bear witness to the fucking Soccer Lombardi champions of 2022 mm -hmm. in the shit show of all shit shows, the Soccer Lombardi in Qatar. You felt the wrath of the Yankees. First time ever having a squad at the World's game. It's our game now. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able Suck to talk about Wales. it before everybody else. Sorry, so thank you to Wales for that. Thank you, yeah, thank you, Wales. Thank you, thank you Wales. Thank you to Wales for in the future describing our team as the powerhouse, mm -hmm. the juggernaut that you had never played before. Because you guys are going to play a great game today. It ain't going to matter. Nope. nope. <laughs> uh -huh. it ain't, and, you know, this isn't like how Qatar had a goal overturned and three minutes into it. Okay, that was clearly, clearly not offsides that they had overturned because Qatar got scored against by Ecuador in the first three minutes of the World Cup kickoff in which they changed the kickoff date so they would be the first game after Morgan Freeman was laying on the ground talking to somebody yep. uh, and the whole thing happened there. And they overturn a goal. And you actually, while watching, were thinking, oh, hmm. Qatar is going to rig this thing for them to actually have success. They did not. They still stunk. Yep. Ecuador scored yeah. a bunch of goals. They couldn't have, they yeah. couldn't have done it. But the United States... It's going to feel as if we have a government backing us oh, yeah. with how much you are going to be inept when you're playing against mm -hmm. us. Your ball possession is going to be nothing. Your first touch is going to be shit. Our shots are about to be laser with pinpoint accuracy to the back of your net. And our celebrations in front of no fans because fans can't even get into the games. No. Fans travel to Qatar. Yeah. Stay in terrible conditions. Oh. Absolutely mm -hmm. brutal, brutal Ugh. situation. Then turns out tickets don't even work to get in. So what? You're not allowed in No, because they don't know why you're here. They don't think you're supposed to get in, or you're not supposed to get the seat that you're supposed to get on top of the trailer. Uh, yeah, the trailer stadium, yep. the trailer boxes mm -hmm. that yep. they're sitting on top mm -hmm. of. So in the COVID-like stadium conditions with nobody in the stands, our boys are going to win. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. And that's what it's all about, this particular soccer Lombardi that kicks off for us in about an hour mm -hmm. in 10 seconds. That's right.
Mm-hmm. Not and to you mention, know, you know, it reeks of dead people when they're staying in their uh, Well, of course, tents. but maybe, I mean, I assume we could win 11 nothing. Maybe for Wales, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll only beat them 4 nothing for goal differential. Maybe help them out, you know, moving forward. Well, it's well. like, hey, listen. Yeah, you guys might sneak in. Yeah, maybe. Because mm-hmm. the minus four is going to carry the rest of the tournament. Yeah. Right. You guys are probably going to beat everybody else. Yeah. Probably. Well. Don't let today's game, Wales kind of sway you in what you're thinking. This is just like when the Giants lose to the Lions or something. Sure, exactly. And everybody's like, oh, the Lions. It's like the United States is the wagon now. Yeah. This is our sport. Well said. The Lions are not. No. I thought we were USA in this situation. No, I was comparing no. to how the Giants fans probably feel fucking terrible about the loss to the Lions. Okay. Not necessarily – because our team is a fucking wagon. Right, right. You know, we're not going to start the season 0 for 50. Right <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we're going to win three straight. Yeah. We're coming out guns blazing, but not actual guns. No, no, no. Because geez, no, we, no, don't no, no. we don't need to start that. No. We don't need to start anything no. off over here. Yeah, and Giants. also, you got Iran right on the other side of it. We saw how bad they were against England this morning. Iran fucking sucks. Yeah. That's going to be the team that everyone in the group just beats the piss out of. So Get the goal differential. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right, sorry about it, Wales. Got to beat your ass in two. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Good run. All right, let's get to a break here. Let's, uh, hour two is about to be something that is truly spectacular. Biblical. And, of course, AJ changes everything. Sure. On everything. This guy. I mean, like, actually, where the hell... Spotify was deleted from my homepage, obviously. How's that happen? Nobody did it. Obviously, nobody did it. AJ didn't do it. Nobody touched it. It just got deleted completely from my computer. I just had to re-download it. How does that happen? What the hell? Nobody did it. Just cut it? No one did it. Remember, nobody did it. That's the thing. Nobody touched anything. It just happened. Is this like Twitter getting deleted off the App Store? No, no, that was like everybody who's a social media manager uh-huh. who oh. thought they had it all figured out. Just, I think in their minds. Did you crazy. see the number of blue check marks? Well, I'm leaving. Yeah. Okay. CBS News said the same thing. They're back in a day and a half. <laughs> yeah. CBS News is like, well, people didn't even know we existed to begin with. Let alone whenever we go off. Of, uh, uh, we should start. We should start going back on there. Oh, uh, we thought it was dead. They were like the. Um, they were like the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Whenever they were like, we're not playing football Dang during COVID. It. And the SEC was like, okay. we're playing football. We are. Have fun. We're playing football. And then the Big Ten and the Pac-12 were like, oh, we grossly <laughs> misread the situation. <laughs> we are going to have to have a football game. We're not going to be able to start for four weeks after everybody else. Oh, we got to do it. That's kind of what happened. Mm-hmm. That feels like that's took place with Twitter, with everybody who knows Twitter. A lot of people saying, this is dead before Monday, dead before Monday. And I've been on Twitter a long time. Love Twitter. Always have. Always will. Best. People are going to fuck it up, I assume. It's been fucked up numerous times in the past. Who knows how Elon will fuck it up. Let's assume for somehow. To... People were acting like it was going to disappear and not exist, though. You people don't know the internet. And you people should not talk about the internet anymore. But I do hope we all make the internet a better place. Sure. Yeah, sure. sure. Which is what we're all hoping for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But everybody wishing for the demise of Twitter... Fucking relax, dude. What is your problem? That is a place where independence can actually gain a little bit of traction. And that's a place where you can learn things from directly from sources that you can't do on any other platform. What is everybody wishing for its demise? I, never, I didn't understand that. And also, how does it die? The platform just crashes? Is that what's going to have to happen, I guess? That's probably not going to take place. No. So I, I'm, I'm happy that Twitter's uh, still surviving. And Elon, we hope you'll be able to figure it out to make it the best version it's ever been. Mm-hmm. With the... Memes that you were posting <laughs> Man, seems yeah. like we're well on yeah, our way. Keep it starting up. off hot. All right, let's get to a break. The idea that he was just going to burn $44 billion two weeks after buying the company was just ridiculous. Yeah, I didn't fully understand that. Well, I'm, but I'm, it wasn't just that. I think people thought it was going to fail because of all the people that stopped working there. Yeah. You know, like the people that were in the marketing department for right. Twitter right. and yeah. the advertising department for Twitter right. and the people that were in all the other departments that were certainly a necessity for Twitter to operate on the day-to-day. Them all leaving. Yeah. Sure. That's gonna okay. Did the algorithm walk out? Did the computer walk out? I don't I, hmm. I didn't hear that. I know the Google one sentient. Right. But did that Twitter one say, I'm done with this? Is that what? Unplug me. I don't think so. I don't even know if it can't because I think it's all cloud probably right. at this point. 
True, so it'll live no matter what. We might be wrong. Maybe Twitter does die in the next couple of days. We'll see. There's a lot of really smart people with a lot of degrees saying that it wasn't going to exist anymore. I'm like, wow, the world is so fucking dumb. And that's inspiring for people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remember, there's a Steve Jobs quote, bad dad, great innovator. Right. Something about the world that you see around you is created by people that are no more intelligent than you are. Okay? They just have different minds. That's real. And it gets put onto display on the internet every single day by people that are supposed to be the smartest people on earth. They are not. Let's go ahead and chase those people. Yeah. Here we go. Let's make the world a better place. Let's be smart about what we're doing. And let's not overreact, except for on Overreaction Monday. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah! Hour two will be on the other side of this five minute break. AJ Hawk will be joining us live from his attic in Ohio. Cannot wait to get his thoughts on the day that was yesterday in the NFL, week 11 Sunday slate, in which, you know, we learned a little bit about some teams, a lot of matchups that didn't really matter, but a lot of teams proved who they are going down the stretch. We'll also do overreaction tweets from around the Twitterverse and also have to respond to something that Ian Rappaport said. We'll be back in five. Be a friend, tell a friend. Take five. 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 What is it? What is the show? Um, it is Max. Jude. It is. <laughs> Please. Max is homesick from school. Right. Oh, Jude. Oh, Godspeed. Yeah, sound very NFL players won't be the only great thing you'll be able to watch on TV. I cannot uh, say any more, but perhaps I'll be on. Max, what's the name of the show he was on? Max. Ma say it, Max. Tell us, Max. Max. What say was it, name? Max. Takedown. Can you? Okay. Oh, just... <laughs> Thank you, Max. That was awesome. What is it? Something takedown? Tailgate takedown. Yeah. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. Hey, can't wait to watch that. Connor, your question. We're going to have a major conversation after this. If you just sent him away for six months in summer, he would have done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, your question for. Uh... Ladies and gentlemen, a man with the dog mentality, Paisano, Coach Sirion. You're fucking awesome, dude. Did you ever feel any pressure that you were gonna have to change and adapt to being a head coach and speaking in the same bullshit ways that every other head coach talks in? Some of the best advice I got was be yourself because if you're not yourself, everyone's gonna see through it. The messaging is the same. You're just doing it in your own way. And I think that's the most important part and being authentic, you're 100% right. As you were saying, if I wasn't me, everybody who would tell the fucking locker room immediately gonna be like, well, this guy is a stooge. There's another coach that wants to talk to you. Uh, coach Sirianni, your question for Coach Sirianni. I feel like I know you just as good as I know myself. What is it about Jalen, you think, from your point of view, last year to this year, that is like cementing him as a guy that people are talking about, this motherfucker might win the MVP? Well, I know which one thing you want me to say. He's a dog. Yeah! yeah. Yeah! He's a dog! Yeah! You fucking why? dog! <laughs> Do you maybe want to play best two out of three, rock, paper, scissors, coach first coach? You're there forever, huh? Like, that's the, you have to have that mindset as the head coach. Like, do you feel like you're the perfect head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles? Because it feels like the team <laughs> is the perfect representative of the city of Philadelphia. And I might be wrong. I'm from Pittsburgh, so the Johns are going to judge me for that. I love the passion of the city and how much they care about football because I care about football. I, I love football. I don't have a lot of hobbies. My biggest hobby is, is football. Rock. Paper, Paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Ooh. Oh, yes. What you got? Scissors, scissors, scissors. scissors. Yeah, the same person. Okay. We, we both threw, <laughs> both through scissors. Dog mentality really is to be in the moment that you're in now and not worry about what happened in the past, not worry about what's going to happen in the future. It's all about our process and about being here today to make sure we're going about to go one and zero this week. That's it. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Ooh. Oh, rough. I definitely got Jason Kelsey the, the kegs of beer. I was just trying to sweeten the deal of, of him coming back. As long as I'm the football coach here, I want him here. So I, I'm, I'm ready to give as many kegs of beer to him next year and the year after that and the year after that because that guy is a dog. Rock, rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. We are getting our ass kicked in this preseason <laughs> game. Uh, Belichick is taking it to us. <laughs> it's halftime, and we are getting booed like you've never been. I, I, I was like, paper, rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot, shoot. Oh! oh.
I think you might have rock hey, there, but hey. You got no <laughs> idea what I'm going to do because you're like, uh, there's no way he's throwing scissors again. Come on, baby. I got a damn flower thrown at me. Right? Oh, a yeah. a, a flower remember. chucked down. We lost to the Chargers. Boom, flower chucked down. Hey, how's your little manure settling in? <laughs> That's literally what that John said as they were throwing that John at you. They were like, how's the manure and how's the flowers coming, coach? Hey, this is game seven here. Rock, <laughs> rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh. Scissors again. He threw scissors again, so I die. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Oh! Ooh. You guys are the same! Right. Oh, hey, this is for 15 Rock, or 10. Paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> dog mentality! I got dog mentality, coach. What can I tell you? When you came to my office and told me your plan about retirement, I never thought we'd be sitting there and you'd be the mega star. Sorry for saying that, but it's true that you are because, you know, your show and what you do and the entertainment you provide, you know, is David Letterman type it's at the very top. And 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 uh, um, I always knew you had that potential. I knew you're going to go and be a comic and those things, which was great. But man, what, what you've accomplished, we're so proud of you that you're a cold alumni player. I mean, you Come know, on, you right. represent- I'm lucky, you, you help me out a lot. Right. You, well, you represent so much about what we're about and the fans just love you, Pat. So um, we're all, I'm always appreciative when you ask me on, that's for sure. Well, we're lucky you stopped by. Not only are you a steward for the game, but I feel like the NFL is really the only sport in America where it's city versus city. It rallies everybody together. Doesn't matter your socioeconomic, doesn't matter your political affiliation, doesn't matter your religious affiliation. It brings everybody together. That's why the sport's so incredible. The fact you've been around it for so long, you should take a lot of pride in that. And I'm very lucky to be a Colt. I know Darius says the same thing. Absolutely. And uh, once I become a billionaire, we'll have your ass back on <laughs> and you can buy me a Rolls Royce. Ladies no, you're moving there quickly. Hey, quickly. Come on, come on, new money inflation, what's it mean? He hit a 64-yard fucking fair catch out of his own end zone right here. Okay, 14 nothing. end of the second quarter. He's in his own end zone, 64-yard fair catch. A lot of people said, guys shouldn't have fair caught it. Who cares? The returner put his head like this and was like, oh, I probably won't be able to return this. So he gets a fair catch. The ball has to be hit so high and so far to be fair caught. If you get a fair catch over 50 yards, it's great. If you get a 60-yard fair catch, people are like, this dude is a stuck. A 64-yard fair catch is fucking demolished. He murders the ball. He has quickly climbed the ranks um, alongside A.J. Cole of Vegas and Tommy Townsend of the Chiefs of having, like, I think the best punting in the league right now, in the game right now. Guys that can hit balls that nobody else can hit. Kamarda started out bad. I think he was rushing. I think he was worried. I think he was trying to get it off too quick. He was in his own head. He has settled in here over, like, the last five weeks. Murders the football. absolute dog named Dustin Hopkins. Yeah. Bury home four field goals, probably with a torn hamstring at some point. Burying home a winner in uh, overtime, not being able to stand on his goddamn leg, having to fall because his foot cannot withstand the weight of his body, but it can withstand the weight of a program, of a franchise, of an organization looking to find their way. And in OT, when push came to shove, Dustin Hopkins did what he did three other times times last night with a torn hammy puts the ball through the fucking uprights. He was in massive amount of pain. 
His teammates saw him. The world saw him. They hoisted this one-legged man up onto their shoulders to say, pal, you are the grittiest dog we have ever seen. I haven't been this confident oh, no. in a Patriots game in two, three years. Oh, no! Let's keep in mind, we have all watched the Bears on primetime. The Bears just are not a good football team. Oh, no! That might be 41 to 3, one extra field goal. Alternate spread, wow. are you going to change it a little bit after seeing the fog over there? Yeah, this morning I took him at 13 and a half. Before the show, I took him at 20 and a half. And then after the show, I'll take him at 28 and a half. Oh, no! Give me a good night. Hey, I'm, I'm don't lose to the Bears tonight. He's don't don't bears. lose to the Bears. Don't worry. You hear me? Don't worry. You know what I'm going through today? You better not fucking oh, lose to the Bears. Been... Your team's fucking dead. You guys lose to the Chicago Bears no. on oh, Monday Night Football? Wow. Oh, no! Your thoughts, Connor? You know, it is what it is. Football is football. None of my bets hit, and because of that, I will not be able to gamble at FanDuel or anywhere for the rest of my life, I don't think, because of those <laughs> losses. However, you know, it's a humbling experience. I'm very glad that we, we're getting this game out of the way. Hey, why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fucking cop! Welcome back to our humble abode, the FanDuel Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, November 21st, 2022. Hour 2 starts now. Football is here, and we can't thank you enough. Football uh, kicks off for the United States in the Soccer Lombardi in about 44 minutes from this very moment. Week 11 of the NFL season had its Sunday slate just yesterday, which we are overreacting to all day today. The Talks of Table is here at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt, rocking that Iowa jersey, huh? Iowa might win the Big Ten West and might punch a ticket to Indianapolis. Oh, control their own destiny. Just got to beat Nebraska on Friday, and then what, what do you know? The team who has maybe the worst offense in the history of college football is going back to the Big Ten Championship. As one of the voices of college football this particular season, I actually questioned one of the coaches even having a job at yeah. one point. Since then, they've rattled off and maybe making it to the Big Ten Championship Wide. game. Congrats Wide. to Iowa getting a big win over Minnesota because I know in Minnesota they go, who hates Iowa? And then they say, we hate Iowa. So I know that's a big-time rivalry game. Congrats yeah, on the win. You know, makes sense, but uh, Minnesota hasn't beaten Iowa in eight, eight years. So, like, Yeesh. is it a big-time rivalry game? I don't, I don't know. This late in the season, especially, snake oil wore off, you know, a month and a half ago. So oh, no need to worry about that. But, yeah, it makes sense that they would hate Iowa. They can't fucking beat us. Uh, Tone Diggs is here, one half of the hammer. God! The Cowboys. And speaking of rivalry game, this weekend, one of the biggest in the history of college football. Right. Ohio State and Michigan will play for a spot in the college football playoff pretty much in a man who is synonymous with one of the teams playing in this game not only because he is the face of the state because he's a college football national champion with the team what? he'd go on to be a super bowl champion a Ryder cup champion the all-time leading tackler for the green bay packers father of 10 covid survivor of five ladies and gentlemen aj hawk hey, hey. how are you buddy Oh, good. How you guys doing? What's happening? Sorry, my voice is kind of oh, weird, man. Yeah. I got the. Uh, I don't think I have COVID, COVID. but I got uh, my w my wife lost her voice for a while. Mine's mine's starting to go, but I'm gonna make it. Okay. Well, I appreciate you powering through. And if you need to step off or cough or you know, it might no. be the thirty cigars. I don't yeah. know if that helps or not. <laughs> that helps it. That helps it. I'm good. I'm good. It just don't talk very much before I come on the show. I mean, your internet. So your your internet server. We'll have to call you back. Let's yeah. call you back and get. It's probably on our <laughs> side, not on your side. Allergies are a real son of a bitch, AJ. Uh, I was experiencing those this past weekend in Montana, and on some of those Saturday mornings when we fly into a place and it's really cold, I'll wake up and my first conversation's happening with somebody at a car, right? Because in the room you're not talking to yourself. I get down there, I start talking to Kirk. I'm like, "Hey, Kirk, good." To and then just voice goes to nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Oh no." Oh no. Is this? Am I going to have no voice today? Why is this happening? Have I lost my voice? And then I have some fluids, some things start kicking in, the voice is back. You never know if it's allergies, a cold, the flu, or now I guess you got to worry about corona. Mm. But I think everybody's starting to feel something at this stage of the season of life at this point. Oh, yeah. I mean, when it goes from what, last week, you know, we had a couple of days where I guess it wasn't last week, but when it goes from like 70 or like 65 to just like below Six. freezing mm -hmm. overnight, that is always it just, I mean, it just fucking kills your system. 
We have breaking news. Oh, uh, it's not about allergies or being able to speak. And I think while you were talking, you saw that I was hearing something mm -hmm. in my ear. Uh, the Denver Broncos have dropped Melvin Gordon. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Ian Rappaport's breaking news that the Broncos make a move following Sunday's loss as Denver has waived veteran running back Melvin Gordon, <laughs> a respected player who spent three years with the Broncos. Gordon's fumbles proved too much a fresh start for all parties. Congrats to Melvin Gordon getting out of there. Yeah, wow, wow, yeah. Remember a couple weeks ago, he wasn't getting the ball at all. He was on a sideline. Yeah. Nobody was wondering. Then he has a couple fumbles. He is out of there. I don't know how he feels. I'd assume happy. It's never good when you have to move and change your, your entire life and everything like that. Who knows what's going on with the Broncos, though. Can't wait to hear his thoughts on Team 3 yeah. and Russell Wilson wherever he goes forward because he's going to be asked about it. And any answer he gives, we're going to overreact to. But I think we will be able to get some information about what life was like pre-Russ to what life is like mm -hmm. post-Russ in Denver. Uh, sorry about the, the getting fired there, Melvin. We hope you find a new job yeah. and Good can't luck. be fumbling a rock. Ball is a program. You right. got it, Melvin. Ball is a program. Joining us now is a man who had bad internet service just a week or <laughs> just about uh, five minutes ago. A guy who's college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, COVID survivor, and stallion of a gentleman, AJ Hawk. Yeah. We back? I don't know. What does it look like for you? Uh, I mean, you're all choppy. Christ. What's happening, you man? You look fine. Something's going. My, I, I tell you what. It when I when I actually yeah. test it, my speed is through the roof. This is garbage. Someone's messing with it. Well, if it, if it means anything, like we're supposed to have three thousand up, three thousand down. Uh, that's what I paid for. But then I found out that our internet can't hold anything more than a thousand up, thousand down. So Ooh. we paid two thousand extra. But if any of the th thousands drop. One of them will make up for the other one. Sure. That's right. I feel like I got bamboozled. Everything's bullshit, but it's great that you are here. And if you end up being, you know, either too uh, heavy voice or, you know, your internet sucks so bad, we'll just drop you off. Let's dive into it. You think it's allergies? You got allergies over there? No, I do not have allergies. No. Oh, are you? That's going around like the whole head thing is going around. Like a bunch of kids got it and missed school and everything, but I'm fine. I'm not sick. Just my voice. Well, okay, I understand. Listen, everything's okay, pal. All right, you're yeah. still a supreme a specimen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you're still a supreme. No, no, I mean, like, I'm not, like, I, I'm i not sick. Yeah, I don't have a cold, whatever that even means. Oh, it's just it. my, my throat and my voice is, like, weird. For that RSC. Okay, so it's not allergies, and, your tone and it's out. not a cold, nope. and it's no nothing at all. <laughs> but your, your allergies, uh, your voice just doesn't work. Okay, hey. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Whatever you You're say, okay. dude. You're right. Especially this week, right? I mean, this is a big time week to be, you know, in good spirits mm -hmm. and in good shape. Ohio State takes on a team from up north. Michigan's coming to town, Ooh. AJ. All eyes are on Columbus, Ohio. Are you excited about it? Are you pumped about it? What's the community doing to welcome the world into Columbus this weekend? Well, the community is kind of worried because I think Michigan and Ohio State both made them worry yes. for a little bit. Hey, you might ruin some of this uh, – some of this hype leading into the big game. So, luckily, they're both undefeated. It's played Ohio State this week. I think people are pretty excited. You've seen the pictures of people sending their – crossing out the M's all over the place. Uh, Hell, yeah. I haven't done that in my house. I don't know if we will. Well, I doubt it. That was kind of – that came after my time, but – I understand. I get it. I understand why they do it. Well, yeah, Texas became a rivalry of West Virginia after my time as well, and I learned about that uh, and how <laughs> how serious it is uh, on the Internet last week, I guess, you know, whenever I made you know even more – popular that I am a coach of the Texas men's basketball mm -hmm. team. I am sorry about it. That rivalry with West Virginia is a real one, so I guess I didn't know that because it happened afterwards we went to the Big 12, but it's real. You know, it is. Yeah, okay. And uh, I understand that. I appreciate all Mountaineers. Let's go Mountaineers. But for you, if, you, if you're not like absurdly Ohio state this week, are you judged by the cult this week? Are you, do you think you are? If you're, you think that's something? Uh, I mean, possibly, but no, I don't. I think people that know, if they actually ask me, they know I'm absolutely rooting for the Bucks. I want them to win, and I, I may not partake in a lot of the extracurriculars, you know, crossing out M's and all of that stuff. And I do say Michigan, but I am 100% on board with the Bucks winning this one. Okay, well, let's go Ohio State. Let's have a hell of a party on Saturday morning for mm -hmm. game day coming out there. Cannot wait. Hey, I think I'm gonna be in your city on Friday night. Can't wait to maybe see Ooh. you and the fam if you guys aren't too sick. Oh, sorry, not sick. Nobody's if sick. If your bodies aren't feeling 100% yeah. for yeah. no reasons at all, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you get a chance <laughs> to run India. Excited to get over there. Let's talk about the NFL slate yesterday. What do you want to lead off with? The Cowboys fucking smacking the Vikings in the mouth with the Vikings at home. The Chiefs being the Chiefs. The Bills going on the road. Uh, the Eagles squeaking one out. What do you want to lead off with, AJ? And let's just dive right in, pal. 
Well, I mean, the Cowboys, obviously, that one, I, it, that's on the top of my mind. But, I mean, the Eagles-Colts game, how excited were you? You were there for the whole game? Well, no, you know that. <laughs> I'm not. I don't have a lot of time at home, especially I mean, coming from Montana. I, I got to beat the traffic. No offense. Paid a lot of money to be able to beat I the traffic, it. too. But I left. Uh, I was there till fourth quarter, midway through fourth quarter. Then I got out of there, so I didn't see the end of it. I didn't see Jalen's touchdown. I didn't see uh, the Colts not be able to make it down the other end where we threw a little check down on a fourth and whatever and ran out of bounds. It's okay. It happens. Things that just keep the ball in play, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, it was. I was loud there early. Pal, hey, AJ. A lot of don't. I was pumped. Don't. Yeah, I was let, pumped for Jeff. Do not let this team do what they're doing to the Eagles. A lot of that out of me. Don't let this game end the way it's playing out right now. Jonathan Taylor and the boys fucking run right down their throats to start the game. Then Parks Frazier forgets that they have a run game for a while. <laughs> yep. It felt like Frank Reich was calling plays again. And Parks is going to have to go through these things. He's 30 years old. It was only his second time ever calling plays. I'm not really blaming him. You got to do what you got to do. I think he got excited to maybe try out some new toys, new weapons, new plays, and everything like that, as opposed to just a boring way. Life's a lot better when you win, isn't it, Parks? No matter how fun it is to call plays or whatever. I think we should have went to Jonathan Taylor a little bit more. JT on the way out was talking to DeForest Buckner, I believe, yep. towards the tunnel saying, I want the ball. I want the ball. I'm like, I want you to want the ball. Like, what are we even doing? We should have won that one. But the Eagles get a huge win. Does that say anything going forward? Do you think about that Eagles team, the way they're able to handle adversity? What did you learn about them? And how do you feel about them going forward in the NFC? I think it's good for them because they, how many, what do I say all the time? Like it pays to win in many different ways and if they're sitting there and during that game there's probably moments where in some of those guys minds it creeps in their head hey if we lose to the Colts right now they just hired Jeff Saturday there's all this this hype surrounding this like we don't we can't let this happen the fact that they they were able to to pull it off and at the end like they did I think it just adds another little thing another little tool on the tool belt moving forward well and I think the building was loud there was energy in there for the first time all year mm -hmm. we score on our first drive which keeps people in it the defense was humming Yannick Ngakwe had his biggest game as a cold I think and it's like we have all the pieces in Indianapolis. So you're, you're talking about like, and I thought about this, like Kelsey after he snapped one over Jalen's head and everything like that. And Kelsey is unstoppable on the third and one. Yeah. That third and one, fourth and one, on, with how powerful Jalen Hurts is, let alone how nimble and low to the ground Jason. Jason Kelsey is hovering about uh, above the earth, just slicing people at that point. It is – I don't think anybody else has ever been able to accomplish it as good as he does. This is not that play, but this is a run from Jalen Hurts, who is incredibly uh, impressive with his feet and how powerful he is, his vision, good cut right there. But I thought about them thinking about that as well. And Sirianni chit-chatted about wanting to play against Frank and win for Frank and everything like that because Frank hired him. Hey, Sirianni, I understand you feel like you're cutting a promo or whatever. But because you left, Frank stunk, okay? So true, true. I understand why you'd want to coach That's against Frank. That's his mentor. Frank. Uh, what do you think of that? That was his mentor. He, he said, don't let, you don't want me to tell you how I really feel. Well, Ooh. Nick, you haven't watched the Colts play or felt the team all year then to understand that. And I think he and Jeff would probably get along well. And I appreciate Nick wanting to do that for Frank. That's good loyalty and good – and he was yelling – at the fans, I mm -hmm. I think he was yelling at Colts fans, but there was Eagles, a lot of Eagles fans. Hey, a lot of Johns in the building yesterday. A lot of green. I thought it was military appreciation, all the green. I'm seeing, oh, those must be camo jerseys. Those must be camo jerseys. And then all of a sudden, there's a E A G L E S. Eagles chant, and then there was a defense chant at one point. I'm oh, like, God boy. damn, uh -oh. these Johns are in here, and we were 13-3. But it was a battle. The entire game was a battle. Those Johns started getting louder and louder as they probably got more boozed up and more confident towards the end. Colts could have won. Colts should have won. Colts didn't win, which is a damn shame they're going to figure it out. Give the ball to fucking Jonathan Taylor more. I don't know why that is an issue with an offensive lineman as a head coach. I assume Jeff is going to chit-chat about that this coming uh, press conference whenever he has it. But the Eagles, I think what I saw from them, they were like this the whole time, dude. There was some barking, okay? Colts players, Eagles players barking. There was some high intensity, but it never felt like Jalen thought they were out. You know what I mean? Never felt like anything was out. Very professional. Very like we are going to – we're matter of fact almost. Win a close one on the road, supposed to win it. That's a big weight off their fucking shoulders, I think. Now they look ahead to keep it going. Now, let's turn to another team in the NFC that we thought was potentially going to be in there as well. Brand new squad representing the National Football Conference over there. The Vikings. This team
team is the team. Look out for the Vikings. They got weapons everywhere. Their defense is unbelievable. They get fucking smacked by the Dallas Cowboys at home right in front of Victor the Vikings face. Why did this happen? Do you think this is okay for the Vikings going forward? Obviously, this can't become a habit, but sometimes you lay an egg. Is that how you're viewing this for the Vikings? And what did you learn about the Cowboys? I guess if I was the Vikings fan here, like, yeah, I'm hoping this is like a one-off. This is an outlier. We faced a team that played out of their mind, but they sacked Kirk seven times, I believe, in the yep. game. Like, that's, that Mike makes it tough, have. especially yeah. – yeah, I mean, with this defense, like, in the back end, too, it makes it that much more difficult. But I don't know. I don't know about the Vikings. This would make me worry a little bit as a Vikings fan, no question. And then you obviously go through the list of, you know, Vikings. Big Mike laughing on the sidelines, though. Sorry to tell you, I'd love to see that. Big Mike was <laughs> laughing in the first half on the sidelines, like, having a good time. Like, this is what it's supposed to be, man. Yeah, well, in Connor staring down Patriots-Vikings on Thursday on Thanksgiving night, and he said Judon might get the NFL sack record – this Thursday against yeah. backup offensive line, Micah looked like he was he could do whatever he wanted. Micah looked like mm -hmm. he could do whatever, and that's probably why Big Mike is laughing. He's like, as long as is Micah playing, yeah, <laughs> is that offensive line still playing the rest of these quarters? Yeah, we're in a good spot. Yeah, yeah. we are in a so good, good spot. Tony Pollard making incredible catches and plays out of the mm -hmm. backfield. Yeah. Zeke running his ass off. Dak making great decisions. And they, if they had OBJ, which seems to be all signs pointing in that yep. particular direction. Look out for the Cowboys. AJ, you might have been three years ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. You're right Look there. out for yeah. the Cowboys. Are they real or are they fake? Is this real or is this fake? And can Mike do this thing, you think, with them? I mean, I don't know. Week to week, we don't really know what the Cowboys are feeling. If they could do this, I mean, they hit on all cylinders, no question. I just, If they can play like 80% of what they did last night, Throughout the rest of the season, they have a good chance. CBS said, "Sorry, we are no longer going to air this as our national game. This game, game stinks. Oh, this game yeah. is so bad. We we apologize for how bad the Minnesota Jerry Jones. You're you're taking my team off national television. <laughs> Don't even you, fucking you, think about you it. You better fucking tell them it's not because of the Cowboys. Yeah. You're right." <laughs> Because the Vikings stink so bad and the Dallas Cowboys are so dominant, we are going to move over to the Pittsburgh Steelers who have been mathematically eliminated from playoff contention, taking on the Cincinnati Bengals at home. No, you haven't mathematically been eliminated. Obviously, anything could happen. But sure feels like that's the case. That's how bad the Vikings looked in there. And then you saying you're worried about the Vikings. Connor, were you about to say something there? Are you worried about the Vikings as well? You don't think they're a real team? A lot of people calling them fugues on the internet right now. Yeah, I'm not worried about the Vikings, especially in primetime, the only other primetime game Kurt played this year he got fucking picked apart by the eagles in philadelphia so i'm not worried about that but oh, more no. so the cowboys you know i think the biggest thing is that they won this game on the road because are they going to catch the eagles like are they going to have any sort of home field advantage or a home playoff game and if dak kind of instead of doing the turnovers in the red zone like he did against green bay like that looked like a lot of what we saw with cooper rush in the cowboys where he's just taking care of the ball not making a mistake they're actually handing it to pollard and to zeke and they're relying on the run game instead of just dak's arm eagles nine and one obviously vikings now eight and two can certainly get them oh yeah, yeah. can they certainly play them again. can certainly get them can certainly get the number one seed overall which you would want, I think, in Minnesota. I mean, that, that stadium's that stadium. I've heard is all, now when we played the Vikings, similar to the Cowboys, that thing was over, maybe first first four plays or yeah. whatever. So we didn't get to experience the, you know, the whole yeah. the whole thing. Oh. You know what I mean? I didn't get to experience oh. anything, which is a damn shame. But I think that would be a good home field advantage for them. They could certainly still get it, but that is a massive egg to lay on primetime television against another team that's going to be in it at the end. That's tough stuff. And I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure their first offensive snap was a strip sack, so it kind of just yes. like set everything up for it. But to AJ's point, like they're inconsistent, but I think if Dallas plays their best game, I think they might be the best team in the NFC. Like the way their offense can can like just go. I mean, they, they travels and their defense, like Micah Parsons, if he's on, no one no one can stop him. No one can. And if you can pressure the quarterback like that, like when they're playing and firing on all cylinders, they're very, very tough to beat. I think the Eagles maybe. The Eagles might be the only team if they play their best football, which they did not yesterday. No. Mm -hmm. Like if the Eagles play their best football, they might be able to keep up, honestly. Yeah. On yeah. defensive side of the ball, they got dog Sue. Yes. Yeah. Linval Joseph. Sue and Joseph <laughs> yeah. are so fucking big. Okay, we get to see him, obviously. Joseph is a fucking house. Huge. House of a big dude. They combined for a sack, uh -huh. I think, in like the first quarter or the third quarter. I forget which one exactly. And it was like, oh, there pays off. Literally signed these guys three mm -hmm. days ago. They get a sack. They eat up Jonathan Taylor in a couple different opportunities. They're big. And with Slay in the back end, it, they now the Colts offense – 
thinks. Decided to do the complete opposite of what you – I mean, the first touchdown, first opening drive touchdown for the Colts since, like, Christmas of last year. And they just handed the – literally just – just handed the ball off the entire yeah. time. Then they come back on the field the next time, and it's three straight passes, and we're fucking off the field. And then they come back, same thing. What do we? What do we do? Why we? Everybody in the stadium can be like, what, what, what do we do? But nonetheless, the Eagles stopped everything yeah. that the Colts had, other than that first fucking possession, right? Eagles defense had big time stop. So it's clear, like in the NFC, it appears as if. You know, are those the two teams that are going to go? Are the Vikings going to be able to get back into it after this big wake-up call? And then on the AFC side, on the AFC side, the Bills, the Chiefs, everybody knows are at the top of this thing. Ravens get a win. Obviously, it was close. Nobody thinks that, but the Ravens are still winning games. The Bengals winning some games. There's a chance that the AFC is going to be a shit show at the end of this season. There's going to be massive implications week 17 and week 18 in the AFC (laughs) on who gets in, Who doesn't? The Dolphins, who we didn't talk about because they're in a bye week, they have the offense that can fucking score on anybody, you think. Is that going to be what takes a team to the championship? Is that the difference between this year and last year, AJ? Last year, we were trying to find which defense, which team had a defense that we thought could win a Super Bowl because everybody had an offense. Now it's almost like which team has an offense that can beat any defense because there isn't a lot of good offensive football happening right now, AJ? No, there's not yet. I mean, defense is Huge, especially when you get in the playoffs and you have some elements you deal with. It. If we think about, like, can you try to predict where these games will be played, what rounds of the playoffs they are, like, what kind of elements are they dealing with? I think that's a huge deal in the playoffs. Sometimes we forget. Some teams aren't built for that. Yeah, and speaking of the playoffs and weather, I think some teams prove that they can run the ball if they have to, like the Chiefs. Yep. The Chiefs When prove- they have to, when the elements make them run the ball and then. And when you can, like, oh, cool, here we go. We're unstoppable now. And it opens up everything else. Literally opens up everything else. But I think the Chiefs proved that they can run the rock. And I think that you're going to have to be able to do that at the end of the season. I love Pacheco and how that dude runs. Mm -hmm. He's high stepping out of a. He he was high stepping out of a out of a tackle or whatever. He runs so. Hey, he's a. Dog with the rock. They got a lot of those guys over there, and they got Patrick Mahomes figuring it out. But like Josh Allen, he can run if he has to. Montgomery got in the end zone. They figured it out. The Ravens have the capability of running on anybody Mm -hmm. if they want to. I think that is what we need to look at. Who has a powerful enough offense that can also run that's going to be able Mm -hmm. to go on a run? And in the AFC, there's a little bit more opportunity, I think, than there is in the NFC, and it's going to be a shit show late, I think. And that's the thing about the Dolphins. Like They had the pass game this entire season, then they add Jeff Wilson from the 49ers between him and Mostert. Like, that running game has kind of come alive. And do you think that is a massive home field advantage for Miami? Because all these teams oh. who are going to be playing in you know cold weather for the back half of this season have to go down to Miami for the playoffs, possibly, and then they have to deal with the heat. I don't know how much the sun will be like it was with the Vikings when it was like 103 degrees or not, because it'll probably be a later game, like a primetime game. But do you think that'll affect it? What are the Dolphins' records? 7-3? and three? Are they 7-3? Yeah, and three? they're the two-seed. Dolphins are seven and three. They can go be, get the number one overall seed. Yep. The Bills can go get the number one overall seed. Chiefs, obviously, in the driver's seat for that, but who knows how a year ends up. And look at the AFC South. Guess who's back on top? Yeah. Seven and uh-huh. three. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Vrabes, can they run the ball? Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Is their defense going to be able to keep people under control no matter who they have fucking playing or who they're playing against? Yes. I think the Titans are another team that in the AFC, with the way it's been going this season, with not that much great offense. Yesterday, I think all but one team playing in the 1 o'clock slate deep in the game had more than seven points. We're talking about not great offensive football happening around the NFL right now. Is that because defenses are better, AJ? Is that why? Or is it schemes? What do you think? Uh, Defenses are definitely better, and they're they're finding out ways to defend these offenses, but also offenses in some places just is kind of poor at times. I mean, that Jets-Patriots game was was a bit weird. Oh! 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 oh. Three, three. That punt, hey, that punt return was awesome. I watched that live. I was so pumped oh, to yeah. see that happen. It was cool. Yeah, obviously a nightmare for Braden Mann and the Jets, and you never <laughs> want to be that person. Uh, the punter from East Carolina who punted to Deshaun Jackson for the Giants was obviously the last one in which that took place where Deshaun was running back and mm-hmm. forth. He ended up going backwards into the end zone, and that punter never saw the field again. I don't remember oh. his name. I just remember he's from East Carolina, had a big leg, and he no longer had a job after that particular game. I don't know. I've, I've sent some text messages to the Jets building 
to try to get a heads up on what they were trying to do? Were they trying to have him kick this out of bounds? It doesn't appear as if that was the case. I think it was a, hey, we need to go cover a kick. Let's go cover a kick. Let's get to overtime here as much as we can because he can't get into field goal range, even though Folk had missed a couple already on the day. We have to be able to flip the field with how much time was left and the Patriots having one timeout and Matt Patricia doing his thing. It's easy to say just kick it out of bounds, but if he kicks it out of bounds at the 35 or the 40 and then they have one timeout and they get in a field goal range and they lose six to three, there's still going to be a conversation. So until I know what exactly they were thinking and why they were thinking it, that late block, not yeah, Mac Wilson, not normal not for a Patriot not situation. Needed, no. And I appreciate them not calling that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, good I, no call. I agree because he no matter, he wasn't going to make the tackle before he scored, so I agree it was a good no call. I definitely – I see that they tried to claim it was not a block in the back. Right. I believe it was. Yeah, but, certainly a block in the back. But the sure. NFL has come out and said, oh, it was from the side or whatever. And I think the NFL is coming to say on the side, like, come on, that guy wasn't going to make the play. None of that yeah. really matters. But by the rule book, if we're going to start doing that, let's start making some more common sense calls in games in important fashion. Also, must remember, they're in field goal range there. Yeah. Blocking back, they're still in field goal range. Yes, Nick Fo probably still lose the game. So a lot of people are like going, "Oh, they they screwed the Jets. The Jets won." No, Jets probably still lose this game. No, and I know Nick had missed, and I know it wasn't easy to kick in that particular thing. More often than not, let's assume he's going to knock that one home uh, to win the game. So I think Jets still lose, but that block can't mm -hmm. happen. And Bill Belichick is doing an entire diatribe yes. to that guy about the history of football and the egregious things that have happened in football. He'll, he'll probably compare it to this when the guy was running with the ball and he gets to, like, the mm -hmm. five-yard line and he slows down. Leon Lett. Yeah, Leon Lett. Leon Lett, he gets stripped. Like, I'll, I'll be excited to hear how Bill laid that out from anybody in the building about explaining it. But that is a terrible way for a game to end. And it was 3-3 until nine seconds left in the fucking yeah. game. That is – How did that happen? Football, dude. That's yeah. what this season has been. One team had more than seven points, I think, like deep into the second quarter in the one o'clock hour. It's like football is different this year. Even though they make all the rule changes in philosophy and scheme changes for offensive football, it just has not been the case this year. And that's why we all hate the primetime games. Yeah. Primetime games have not been high scoring at all. That's why we hate it. I think it's because there's been such fucking good defense, and I assume that's what happened with, between the Jets and the Pats. Yeah, exactly. Combination of the Pats having a really good defense and the Jets offense, including Zach Wilson, are very, 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 very bad. And I also have a little, you know, more bad news for you guys. Starting Thursday, the Patriots will be on primetime for the next month. So there will be some offensive games you see from the Patriots. Oh but God. just take it in. They got a great defense. Come on. Okay. Just remember that. Judon. Watch is... Judon. Watch Duggar. Watch Jack Jones. A lot of talk about rookie corners and Stingley and Sauce. They're awesome. Jack Jones, also a rookie corner who has not given up a touchdown. If you remember, he was the guy who had to pick six. You against guys are going to get boat raced by somebody. If you're on primetime, you're playing against a good offense somewhere, right? Who do you got? The Bills will probably boat race us. Right, However, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, we had that win game, and that was in primetime. Oh, Maybe we get happens. another one of those. And then the other games that are in primetime, Cardinals. They stink. However, yes. that can't be flexed. Raiders, primetime, McDaniels. Oh. That one should get flexed That's Monday out. night or no? I believe that's Sunday night. Oh, that's not uh, that's Get not that happening. flexed that's out. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it does because I don't want you Sounds guys. Sounds like two out of four are gone. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Bills is Thursday. Okay, that's in. So that's in. Vikings, Thursday night football, and then Cardinals, Monday night football. So only the one will get flexed out. But it's still, Raiders, hey, yeah. thank God that they're at least flexing one because man, well, that on, game. In week 16, you're on Saturday. So that's primetime oh, yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, man. that's right. Wait up. Uh, Oh, because uh, all the games are on Saturday for Week 16. Because Christmas Eve is uh, sun or Christmas is Sunday, so they have three games on Christmas. All the rest of them are on Christmas Eve. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought we had That's regular Sunday. Yeah, no. me too. No. I, thought, I thought Saturday was specialty days. So, yeah, so, so it is for the last three weeks. Like the Pats Colts played on that Saturday, but this year because Christmas, Christmas is Sunday. Yeah, because Christmas gets less games. Saturday yes. gets all the share, the lion's share of the games. Yeah, last year, remember, we had, I think it was maybe it was Packers Cardinals. No, but we had, right. oh, Packers Browns yeah. at Lambeau for Christmas. There were only three yep. games that day. Okay, got it. Got it. I was just assuming that we took over Christmas. Yeah. Like, Sorry, basketball. Yeah. Wow. Still. Well, yeah, definitely still. <laughs> yeah. Definitely still because of the games, and hopefully they'll be good. But I thought we were just like, yeah. This All is, day. Hey, sorry. Jesus was born. We get it. Yeah. This, is, this is week 15, yeah. week 16, whatever Sunday. it is. Let's go ahead and figure it out. Yeah. It's nice to know we moved it. Look at the NFL. Huh? Hey. We'll go Christmas deal. Eve. We'll go Christmas Eve. Hey, you're welcome, basketball. Only put three. Go to, you guys get uh, 9 a.m., 11 p.m. 
Enjoy. Go ahead. Put have some, fun. Have LeBron tip <laughs> off 6 a.m. local there in L.A. Mm -hmm. or have him tip off at 8 p.m. local. That's the only way you're going to have any time because we got to do what we got to do. Uh, I assume the NFL ratings are going to continue to go in um, tonight. Big one in Mexico. Cardinals with Colt McCoy taking on the Niners. Uh, Niners favored by nine and a half as of an hour ago. I do not know if that has changed or not. Mm -hmm. Colt McCoy and the Cardinals, though, we think that's the, um, oh, yeah. the best version of the Cardinals, right? Yeah. 100%. So far this year, for sure. Does Kyler know that? Do you think that's uncomfortable between Colt and Kyler, who I assume have a great relationship? And if Colt wins, we're not saying I'm, I don't know. I haven't made my pick yet. And AJ, you had a hell of a weekend picking games. Oh, yeah. Hell good. of a weekend, dude. I think you went like 8 4 and 1 or something like that. I mean, like, real good weekend out of you. Yeah, 8 4 and 1. I went 5 7 1. Not great. I won some bets, but not the picks were not fantastic. And the super boost is ice cold. And since AJ just won 8 4 and 1, that means he's back on a heater. Guess what gets to happen now? Yes. AJ's Here got the super go. boost. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, AJ. We've been Woo! waiting for this. Thank you for taking yep. the reins of the Super Boost, which will obviously come uh, on Thanksgiving. Can't wait to see which game you decide to pick. And this might be a group one as well, I think, uh, to celebrate nice. uh, FanDuel's uh, Thanksgiving big day. Okay. I think uh, I just remembered that. AJ, mm. you might have it for Sunday. You might not have it for Thursday. Okay. Nice. I think Thursday. Let me know. We're doing one big one, I think. Oh, okay. Like everybody is. For Thanksgiving. Hey, bring everybody together. Everybody like uh, okay. us. Fandle TV. Oh, I think it's going to be That's like nice. a. Uh, I think they're going to try to nice. get. Feel good. I think so. Okay, that'll be sweet. Maryland, welcome to the Fanduel family in 15 minutes. Here we yeah. go. Oh, Woo. Maryland's first day on the book today from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Okay, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Need you to download and get active with FanDuel Sportsbook now. 2 p.m. You cannot get a bet in for the U.S. soccer game that is kicking off at 2 p.m., but you should be able to get some live bets in and also be able to bet on Monday Night Football night. Now, it will end at 10 p.m., so then tomorrow off, and then it's back open on Wednesday. So this is like a soft open for FanDuel in Maryland. All the tech is just as good as it'll be on Wednesday. Everything's ready to go. This is regulation things. So, Maryland, welcome to the FanDuel family. You have eight hours to join today, and then Wednesday it's a full pop-off. Yeah, and they do have one of those booths where it's like, hey, you guys are the new state to FanDuel. Here's, you know, some free money. Uh, tonight it is for Monday Night Football to have one passing yard. You well, win your bet. Only available in Maryland. Uh, mm -hmm. If you think that'll happen, you should bet on it. Now, <laughs> one passing yard in this particular offense, Jimmy G might hand it off sure. every single yeah, down. That's right. Cole McCoy might hand it off. Sure. But at some point, somebody's going to have a forward lateral for a yard. Yeah. Congrats, Maryland batters winning their first bet. There you go, Maryland. Here you go, boys. That's not available everywhere else. Only available in Maryland. Welcome to the FanDuel family from 2 to 10, AJ. 2 to 10, then it's shut down. Soft opening. Need everybody on board. I don't get that. It's just some regulation type thing. Yeah, there's a lot of shit that's very dumb when it comes to the back end stuff of this FanDuel being legalized in different states. Because I believe it's like you have to get parties to agree with themselves and then parties to agree with the other party. And then everything. So from what I've heard in the politics world, tough to make one of those happen and then tough to get mm -hmm. the both to happen. And then once it does, there's always somebody who's smarter than the other person. So there's always added stuff. Nonetheless, by yeah. Wednesday, it'll be off and running like every other state is. Today, just eight-hour period. Come join the FanDuel family. Get that free bet for tonight's yes. uh, mm -hmm. no-sweat bet tonight for uh, the Monday Night Football game of One Passing Yard. And we're pumped about it. Let's go, Maryland. Yeah. Here we go, Here we go Maryland. Maryland. Ohio comes in January 1. Mm -hmm. We're counting down the days for the Ohio folks to be able to join us. Can't wait for that. And then more states will roll out. Now, tonight's game, AJ, because in the last hour, obviously, we're winning the soccer Lombardi yeah. against Hell Wales. Yeah. Boom. And it might Ooh, take yeah. some of our attention tonight. The Niners and the Cardinals will battle in Azteca, New, not New Mexico, Old Mexico mm. uh, game. Uh, nine and a half point favorites are the Niners with Christian McCaffrey and the boys taking on the Cardinals. No home team, but we assume Niners faithful will be yeah. big. Yeah, they'll mm -hmm. be there. Seems like that is something that Niners fans are is very passionate in very widespread. I think they have a large fan base from back in the day when they were very dominant, and now that they're good again and great again, they've been able to be on full display. Probably be a Niners home game, if we're guessing, is, is how it'll feel. Does that change anything for you? Nine and a half, too many points? What do you think about the game tonight, A.J. Hawk? I mean, nine and a half definitely seems like a lot. What would the line be if Kyler was in the lineup? What do you think? Eight and a half. Seven. 
Yeah. Like for real, would it change? Six would it change a bunch? Eh, no. No, they think only a couple so. points, but probably okay. maybe a little. Nine and a half know. seems like a lot. Might Stone be a, right. I like. Might be eleven and a right half. Now. I like Jimmy G. You like Jimmy G? You like the Niners minus nine and a half? Yeah, I don't, I don't love the nine and a half, but I would. Yeah, I gotta take it though. I think they get after. They heat it up a little bit. They heat up Colt McCoy. Golly. How dude. much does kicking affected with Stadio being down that. there? Like, do you lean so towards – that? that's what I mean. Yarders. Like, so the, the Niners have a decidedly better field goal kicker. Like, for, does that impact anything or no? Who's kicking for the Is cards? Is out again? I thought he might have re-aggravated his hip. What's up with – is he okay? Is Prater okay? He was questionable last I saw. Yeah. And uh, also Marquise Brown not playing. He's still – D Hop, I believe, is going to play. Yes. Oh, D Hop always plays. Mm-hmm. You tough son of a bitch. Arizona Cardinals, here's the injury report. When's this of? Today? Oh, this is game I status. So. Buda Baker out. Zach Ertz out. DJ Humphreys out. Byron Murphy out. Max Garcia questionable. Marcus Golden. Is that no designation, the dash? Kyler Murray, questionable. Matt Prater, no designation. Looks like full practice, though, those three days, right? Oh, so Prater's going to hit a 90-yarder. Okay, there we go. Prater might hit a 90-yard field goal in warm-ups tonight. I can't wait to watch that. Ball flies. Yeah. Look for Mitch Wisnowski to have a big game. I think because he hits an end-over-end ball, probably travel much further into thin air. Andy Lee bombing balls. Watch Watch their wind, too. I know guys get gassed out there. Yeah, because uh, the altitude, right? I think so. So you like the Niners minus nine and a half? Love it? I don't love it, but I like it enough to take it, yeah. All right, give me the Cardinals plus nine and a half then, just yeah. because. I mean, I've had That's a bad sure. weekend anyways. Picking, it's a lot so. of points. It's a lot of points. And Colt can sling it, so I get it. It's a lot of points. It's in Mexico, so it's like a, it's a bowl game almost, it feels like. A little bit different. Yeah. Maybe it'll be closer. But there's a chance, and I said this to Rapport. There's a chance the Niners run them out of the gym. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a chance the Niners, yeah. the way they play at that altitude, with the way the fans, I think, are going to be with the Niners faithful, there's a chance this gets ugly when it comes to the Niners. Gonna, it seems like a nice anytime touchdown parlay evening this evening. Yeah, uh, absolutely. In this particular game. Yeah, getting great odds on the Cardinals' backup tight end, the first one I believe that was taken off the board this year. I forget his name, but he's at Colorado, Colorado State. State. But also uh, – you know, Arizona doesn't match up terribly. Like, Isaiah Simmons can cover the tight end and the sure. running back pretty well. And, you know, Buda Baker's on the back end. And J.J. Wad is just going to let him run oh. all over Arizona. Yeah, but, I mean, Sam Fran sets a tone. Yeah. They're, like, they're, like, uh, they're like Tennessee. Like, mm-hmm. hey, this is what we're doing, and this is going to be all night. Here it is. Are the Cardinals made to stop that? We'll see. Will Kingsbury's cartel ties come into effect tonight? Because the house he lives in? Yeah. Ooh. I do wonder if who he bought that home from yeah. is potentially chit-chatting with him about how tonight's game yeah. should go. Pushing all that coke yeah. might help him. Whoa. Just if he had cardell ties. So just... Yeah, I mean, that's what we're referring yeah. to. Oh. You don't have to actually oh. fucking say Some things just <laughs> don't have to be said. Uh, I thought you were just saying, like, they gave him the house. I wanted to make sure people knew he was still working. All right, let's do some overreactions <laughs> from around. Let's do some overreactions from around the Twitter this morning. Put out the bird call for folks to send us in their overreactions, and they did, didn't they, Ty? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good ones today. Got all the way up. Even with the World Cup plan, I think it got up to number two or number three trending in the United States, which is fantastic. We can't thank enough people for getting involved in that and tweeting that. And I think it's a good therapy session for some people. Oh, yeah. Kind of let it all out because we want to be a welcoming place whenever we say, send your tweet in with hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact, but... We're going to win the Super Bowl. With that being said, a lot of shit to figure out. We fucking suck. I know, I'm not sure we're going to win the Super Bowl. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, that is basically, in a nutshell, what Overreaction Monday is. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to the first one here that Ty Schmidt picked out of the bunch from Brian Zelk. At KBJA Daddy. Whew. Hashtag PMS, I don't want to overreact. But Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL today, period. Travis Kelsey is the best tight end in the NFL today, period. Andy Reid is the best head coach in the NFL today, period. The Chiefs are the best team in the NFL today, period. Hashtag Chiefs Kingdom. Do you believe them, A.J. Hawk? Is this an overreaction or not? Nah? This does not feel like an overreaction to me at all. I, I can 
you can make a point for every uh, every argument he has here that, yeah, you know, right, buddy, you're probably spot on. It's not only from their resume, but what they've been doing this year as well. Yeah, and I think you're 100% right. Andy Reid in like top five of wins uh, in the history of NFL head coaches. I don't think he's going anywhere. I think the team has been built. I think they deserve a lot more credit than they already get. I think they've already cracked into the, oh, this team's really good. Patrick Mahomes is still young. This dude is still young. Yeah. He's figuring out, still learning, still getting better, even though he's making immaculate plays every single weekend. Congrats to the Chiefs in the Chiefs' kingdom. And in L.A., it was loud, but the the national anthem singer had a little sauce on the national anthem, uh -huh. so the Chiefs fans weren't able to necessarily catch the, which was smart by the Chargers national anthem singer, because he knew that there was a chance that that national anthem was going to get hijacked by the Chiefs fans. And uh, listen to this, a little sauce on it so they couldn't be all on the same page. You hear these motherfuckers, though, and the Chiefs kingdom is loud. Go ahead, uh, Foxy. Yeah. Smart carrying it out. Put a lot of sauce on that, mm -hmm. but you heard the Chiefs there. They weren't all at the same time because I think they were waiting for the to end. Old Buddy got good lungs in mm -hmm. it. <laughs> That's good playing. Other teams should think about that when you're playing the Chiefs. Put a little sauce on the national anthem because if not, the Chiefs' kingdom are going to own the end of the national anthem, and Chiefs fans are going to be like, whoo. We're home again. Mm -hmm. Hell, yeah. Hell of a win. Congrats to them. Good luck to everybody in Chiefs Kingdom the rest of the way. Good right. game, Chiefs. Let's go to another overreaction from around the internet. Uh, <laughs> at Childish Trevino. At uh, Childish Trevino. Hashtag PMS, I don't want to overreact. But. The Broncos fucking stink. We blow so much ass that even when we switch play callers, we still can't get 20 points. We're so fucked as an organization with Russ. And I think we say, fuck it. Draft a QB next year. Fascinating insight from Childish Trevino. Is this Childish from Trevino? Or is this an accurate <laughs> depiction of what life is as a Broncos fan, AJ Hawk? I mean, I, this feels pretty accurate, don't you? If you could put yourself in a Broncos fan's shoes for a day, like, don't you feel like, hey, this is it? This is what we're living? Just lost to the Raiders, who are a complete clusterfuck. Yeah. Our head coach was calling plays, had to hire <laughs> a game coordinator. None of them are working well. Russell Wilson, we paid 200 and some million dollars. If he was to score 18 points in a game, we'd be 9-1 and one at this particular part of the team. Instead, we're not. New coach, new everything. What do you think the overall angle and narrative from Broncos fans was this morning? on Twitter, Ty Schmidt. Yeah, for sure. That A lot of fire Nathaniel Hackett. People are done with him. But, like, yesterday, I mean, Hackett's going to eat a bunch of shit. But, like, uh, before, in, in the fourth quarter, they had a third and long, I think, and Russ could have just kind of slid down, did what Heineke did last week against the Eagles and given himself up. Instead, he throws it out of bounds, kills the clock. Uh, the, the Raiders don't have any timeouts. But now it's, it's after the two-minute warning. There's a 147th left. He gives them the opportunity to just go right down the field with <laughs> enough time. They kick a field goal and force overtime. Like, if you're watching that kind of stuff, it's like, yeah, and Hackett sucks, but, like, this is Russ's fault. Like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, he just doesn't look anything like the guy they paid for. Yeah, he doesn't look like a guy who uh... – you know, it's going to be a top. He doesn't look real confident. He doesn't look that confident when you watch him on the sidelines and everything. It just seems like he's just kind of going about his business. And he, I don't know. Like, he, he looks like it doesn't bother him or he's not getting frustrated. I know he, he takes pride in being positive all the time, right? It seems like, but it just seems weird watching. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a guy who's top five in the history of the quarterback uh, position, which is allegedly what he's looking for, which is why the offense had a change in Seattle, which is why he went to Denver. He wants to be remembered as an all time great. This might be an all time bad move going to Denver and an all time bad series of events for Team Three, who continue to get worse and worse as the season goes on somehow. They need an ayahuasca trip to kind of reset everything. Yeah. Time. The entire the team, team Three. The entire team. Team. The entire team needs to go down, do one of those little celebration things in the TP, and then come out on the other side and remember what they are, which is a football operation, not a movie. Okay? Stop making him be a fucking movie character. Mm -hmm. He's fucking Russ Wilson. Let's move on. Broncos fans can't be happy. Let's go to another overreaction. It's from Willie Wenzel. At Willie 
Wenzel69. Uh. <laughs> Hashtag PMS, I don't overreact. But, but it's time for Jets fans to give Brady Quinn some respect. Not for what he said about the Jets team as a whole, but for what he said about Zach Wilson. Zach is simply not a good quarterback and is holding this Jets team back. Hashtag Jets Twitter. Now, Brady Quinn did come out a little bit guns a blazing before the season started. His team's dead before the bye week, is what Brady Quinn said. He also said, Zach, I guess there's arm talent there, but I haven't mm -hmm. seen anything that makes me think he's going to be a great NFL quarterback. And Jets fans said, oh, you don't know. No. Then it came out that he was banging moms, and they're like, you don't know. <laughs> and then Zach gets hurt, and he comes back, and Zach's back. And now he said, no, I don't think I disappointed the defense by scoring three points. Fuck them pretty much. There's a locker room divided, allegedly. The coach is saying the offense is dog shit. The wide receiver who got drafted early is saying the offense is horse shit. Is everything in flames over there? And does your brother-in-law deserve a little bit more respect for what he said about the Jets going into the season, A.J.? I, don't, I know he said, what, that they would have, like, one win by now? Is that what he said? Something yeah, like that? Yeah. yeah, he was very wrong so, on that. So they mm -hmm. hang that over yeah. his head, I think. I think they hold that Yeah, out. I'm sure they will. Yeah, I mean, when you have a strong take like that, you're going to have to deal with whatever happens. But I don't know on Zach Wilson yet. I can't tell if he's – I'm not going to call him done. I'm not saying he's a bust. Like, watch that dude and yeah, what he can do, man. what he did in college, and how he can move and how he can throw. Like, he doesn't – there's guys that – I think at times you look at him like, yeah, they're never going to figure it out. I can't say that about Zach. I don't know if he can figure it out somewhere else or theirs. I don't know. We're a big team team show, aren't we? Like, yeah. hey, how, how are you as a teammate? Like, aren't we a big yeah. – I think we have yeah. showcased that. Yeah, that was mm – -hmm. I, I, I always yeah. thought he was a team guy until now, though, until I see these post-game things when he's saying no. Like, that's the easiest thing ever. Yeah, of course I let the defense down. Like, that's, that's very easy to do. It was an alley-oop for him to say he let down the defense, mm -hmm. let down the yeah. Jets organization, let down the fans. Yes. Like there's an e – and not saying that he has to feel that way, but when you're the face of a franchise, which a quarterback is, like there is things that you just have to do to be a good teammate, to showcase to everybody else, not only in the locker room, in the fan base, in the, but in the building. Like everybody in the building, like, hey, this guy is a guy. This guy wants to be the guy. This guy could be the guy. I think that is what that press conference's biggest takeaway for me was, like – you sound like a child there, bro. Like you, you, you yeah. sound like a college quarterback or a high school quarterback, not a CEO of a fucking multi-billion-dollar franchise, which is what a quarterback is. And I know he just played a terrible football game, and they just lost on the last play, and he's probably not exactly happy in that moment as well. So maybe we should give him a pass for being a human and having emotions. But also, like that was an alley oop for you to say yeah. all the bullshit that keeps the troops together. All the bullshit that you could possibly say there, and he took the other option, which I think is an indicator of how he is as a leader, honestly. I think yeah. that personally, and he's young, so maybe he'll grow into it, like you're saying, but that was a big problem in my eyes, just as a person that has never had to do a press conference after losing a game, me. Never had to do it, so I'm not going to act like I'm a veteran at it. But that's a chance to really bring people together as opposed to tear people apart, and I think that was a bad decision. Tactically. Yeah, it could have it could have silenced some of the like the the voices in the locker room and like, the coach says that the offense isn't good and other players are saying it. It could have at least gave you another week maybe of hey like, maybe this guy will figure it out. Like now, I think you just add fuel to the fire for all those guys that were kind of on the fence if this is the guy or not. Yeah, and they're still in it. Like they're still six and four. Yeah. They still have a chance, and to oh, do really? that is just so dumb. And that's why another reason to put in one of the greatest leaders in the history of the NFL, Joe Flacco. Yeah. This also isn't the first time something like this has happened this year. Like he's had a couple opportunities where earlier in the season he played like shit, and you know they kind of asked him a, a similar question. He was like, you know, you guys care about stats way more than I do. Like I don't care about the stats. And then there was also the reports after this, just like the way he was carrying himself in the locker room that pissed guys off. Yeah, I seen a guy after we lose a game bad get on a plane and worry about a dice debt. And it was at that moment I knew we were fucked, <laughs> you know? It's like those types of situations where it's like, is this guy invested? And it sounds like that's what people are asking about a starting quarterback in the NFL for a team that's still in. Can't be having that happen. And then Dane Orslovsky's on the internet this morning. Not only did he throw everybody under the bus in a press conference, Yesterday, yeah. he didn't even know what the plays <laughs> were. He said, what was he, that? He said, yesterday. Uh -huh. Yesterday. Who yesterday. Yesterday. Who? Dane. Yesterday. Uh, you, like on purpose? That Every is, day he that's says, how he yesterday. Says that's how he, do you ever listen? You don't listen to him? No. I, I, I understand why. There's a lot of people that don't. No, I yeah. watch him. 
watch. I, do, I watch his, uh, you know, when he goes on the board and, you know, says it on the show. Like, well, here, I always hear when he says it here, when he goes like, yeah. yesterday, he, he says it in a, I guess that's Connecticut <laughs> yeah. Yeah. accent, I guess. Bro, that's yesterday, awesome. Josh McDaniels had a fucking career saving, altering win for Fudge the Raiders. Yeah, Fudge 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 excuse me. Come on. Shoot. <laughs> we'll get our Dane Orslovsky impression down, but he was showcasing a lot of plays where it appeared as if Zach Wilson was running one play yesterday and everybody else was running a different play yesterday, and that can be found <laughs> stop, on Dan stop. Orlovsky's Twitter. He says it. He does. Yeah. Every time. Mike. I say Don, so I guess I can't really talk. But when he says yesterday, I always like, I'm like, there it is. Yeah, and you're from Pittsburgh, and he is from Connecticut, so a little different. What, Connecticut right? people don't talk like that? No. They don't what? say yesterday? I'm, I'm, from, I'm from 20 minutes north of Boston, and I don't say yesterday. There's people Bruce. in Boston have the Boston accent. People oh, that's a Boston accent you're saying. We have the no R's. Yesterday? Does yesterday? Bruce say yesterday? What does Bruce say? Because he's Bruce, Bruce doesn't say yesterday. Bruce says yesterday. <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> Yesterday, in a suit. Bruce. Yesterday, the Giants <laughs> get fucking <laughs> dog walked <laughs> by the Detroit Lions. Yeah. Would you say that that day, twenty four hours ago, was a good day or a bad day? Bad day. F wet day. Yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. I, uh, Sounds like you made that one up. Eh? I think it's New York uh, that he's like trying to. Oh. I'm walking See, here. See, and that's why Hi, Connecticut Jack. sucks. Boom. That's why Connecticut sucks right yeah, there. They're Boston stuck in the fucking middle, and, and they can't decide. What really hurt Bruce, and, you know, he was bummed yesterday, but when he came in and realized that Lions fans wear cardigans like Foxy, it would just kill him. He, <laughs> could, he couldn't handle it. He couldn't How handle about it. it, Bruce? How about oh, I it? I see you, Foxy. Look at you. That's right. Foxy's always got good Mr. Tricks. Rogers. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So it's yes. What do you say, though, Bruce? Honestly, you were, you were doing a New York accent there. Just yesterday. Yeah, just Connecticut standard. accent is yes, the proper today. pronunciation of everything. Oh, that's what Ohio people. So what you just said, what Ohio people say. I've had a couple of friends who maybe went to the same high school as this guy, so I assume they're all taught the same, you know, brainwashing situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the American English language is heard in its purest form in the state of Ohio. We do not yeah. have yeah. any. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that what you movies, mean? movies, TV shows? They all have like no. the Midwest Ohio accent. You're right. Okay. That's what they say. They they believe that. I just want to let you know. They fucking. And this isn't like a bit. Like they actually. You you say what you just said to them. Not Ohio Midwest. It's a Midwest accent you see in film and TV and everything. Shut up. I don't know because like Wis true. Wisconsin has Wisconsin. Yeah, I said, yeah. I've long said yeah, that. About it's not too, a How do you say the uh, sport that's movie, being played in the World Cup, AJ? Soccer. Boom. That's not how you say it. I know a lot of say. people that say soccer. 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 We're playing soccer. soccer. You're talking like there's a Cleveland accent that says bad and sad. That's yes. terrible. Yeah, oh, that's kind of Chicago, too. Yeah, yeah a that's bit. a little yeah. Chicago. Yeah, and what yeah. about just, you know, people from the deep south like molasses? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh shit. Shit. I'm out. What's, like, what's the projector doing? <laughs> what you huh? say? What's the projector doing right there? Yeah. Oh, up. Fucking you watch the game. Game. game on, dude. Oh, for the World Cup. Yeah. yeah. Kick it off the net. No, it's going right through the projector. Oh. 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 Wow. Look at you guys. Yeah. I don't know what the view yeah. is. It looks good. They That's can sweet. see it from opposite angle. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 oh let's take a break. <laughs> 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 Great star for Team USA. We're, we already got a corner kick. I mean, we're rolling. Dude, they're fucking dominating. Really. Yeah. That matters. Hey, it does. Was. Yeah, you hey, fucking we've been, trying goals? To, we've been trying to find this. set up a goal? Almost. Been, listen, Almost. a corner kick is a setup for a goal. Yes, you're in their area. That is like stats that we can bet on. Yes, it actually. Can. Corner kicks, mm -hmm. shots on net, time of possession. We got to bet on all that Which shit. Which I don't even know if the, if the Welsh have had the ball. What's it yet. on? FS1? Fox? Fox. No, Fox. just Fox. It's not Team USA today either. Uh, fucking Welsh are parking the bus. Yeah. This looks awesome it? with the lights William. off. Yeah, dude. Oh, us, you're saying we're looking like we're in the shadows? Yeah, it's sweet. You do look good. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. How the arms look pretty good. Tell you yeah. what, when the lighting was oh, like yeah. this one time, a group of guys caught the ball and threw the ball no less than one million times. <laughs> Remember that? No, we never got a right answer on how many. One how million. Many. I believe. Set, definitely set a fucking world record. Yeah. ESPN record for, yeah, sure. for sure. Oh, yeah. Most completed passes in oh, a during the watch along. Might be live yes. TV record, actually. Paul, we need an adjudicator here. Guinness World Records. It's live, it's all there.
It's always hey, I tuned in. I tuned in live at that moment. I was like, I'm going to check in on the boys. And I tuned in, and you guys were going, boom, boom, <laughs> boom. <laughs> Just throwing the ball. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. I wish I was there for that, honestly. <laughs> boom. Think about somebody awesome. that had no idea where. Boom. We just did that for 10 <laughs> minutes on ESPN2 Hilarious. in a 31 to 3 game. That's well, why I was laughing. Statistically, I was of the randoms. <laughs> you know, Mississippi State was it Mississippi State or yeah, it was. Yeah. They had an, you know, the score between them and Alabama was 170 uh, to nothing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, what else do they want us to do? All right, let's get to a break. We'll do some more of reactions on the other side. We'll also follow along as the Welsh attempt to play the most boring style of soccer in the history of soccer. I do the same thing with the powerhouse that is the United States yeah. team, though. Mm-hmm. What do going- they do? They're, they're cagey somehow? How do they slow uh, us down? No, they're packing it in. They're packing it in, you know what I mean? Not going to see Playing them. Playing t- zone. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. But it's like just getting bodies inside of the- Like, they're going to keep probably eight behind the ball. at all. Eh, maybe ten, it looks like, at this point. And this is why we did our bet. We bet the tie pretty hard. It was like plus 200 because it's soccer. So we bet that as hard as we possibly could. But we need the United States to get a win here, okay? This World Cup has been a sham and a shit show (laughs) since before it even started. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Seems like it's all right. Right? Yeah, of course. That's because you stand with Qatar, asshole. I don't even know where Qatar is, bro. You do. It's on Earth. Boom. I'm just saying, you tune, I tune in, I watch like the, the local broadcast, nothing's going on. There's no issues. The Qatar local broadcast? No, yeah. I don't see that one. Just what I'm watching oh, over here. What they the reporter me. on the broadcast got robbed live on air. Yeah. And the then day. she was asked. It's a good, it's a she, good thief. She was, I think so, too. Can't, she was asked what she wants the punishment to be for the person. Cut their hands. And she said, I, I am not. I am not going to be the one that is. I would just like my wallet back. It's <laughs> <laughs> a real thing that happened. Like th- that question and answer really happened. I read the report. Who, wait, who asked her? The cops. They said, we got cameras everywhere. We're going to be able to find your stuff yeah. or whatever. What do you want the punishment to be? And she was like, oh. Uh, Got their hands off. I just want my wallet. Works. I think that is. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, typically. Oh, yeah. I'll we, shoot him in the head for you. I don't care. No, I don't <laughs> think that is something that is happening. Are you guys behind? Oh. AJ. Hawker. Why do you got to do that? We probably are, so maybe yeah. fucking pipe yeah. down. Asshole. Polythic? Hold on. Let's go. I don't know who's who. Let's go, boys. Oh, here it is. Let's go, boys. Oh. Over oh. toast. Long balls. Oh. Oh. beat somebody packing it in. Is that Pulisic? Oh. Oh, it didn't. Hit a it's rocket, a boys. <laughs> oh. Did. Good ball. Oh. 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 What's your deal? What are you oh. fucking getting us excited about? They didn't score. Fucking Josh. Oh, buddy almost headed it in his own goal. Dude. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> All right. Let's get, let's get to a break. Fucking All right. We'll what? Get Does to that a... not happen? You're the worst. Oh, buddy, you almost had to see it. It. He did I almost, mean, he's right. I mean, he did almost head that. Old buddy did almost head it into his own goal. That oh. one. That's a fucking good ball. Long balls are how you beat somebody packing it in, by the way. Going to have to do long balls. Okay. Diagonal runs. Let's go, boys. Come on. Let's win the soccer fucking ball. Goal, boys. Three, All right, let's get to a break. Hour three will be on the other side. More overreactions. We'll probably be watching live here. And then we'll make our uh, – you're with the Niners. I don't know if I get – oh, yeah, I'm with yep, the Cardinals. Yep. All right, so yeah. this show is probably about over. <laughs> <laughs> It's Overreaction Monday. We apologize, but the United States, this could be a watch along some more overreaction. Hoping for a tie. Mm-hmm. And you're hoping for a tie, too, for a 90 plus minute. We, are, there's no, we don't know what the ending is going to be. Maybe 98 minutes, maybe 105. We have no clue, but <laughs> you're hoping for a tie. Well, yeah. U.S. win is the goal. That's what yeah. we want. Oh, but okay. we're not going to okay. lose. We're potentially going to tie. If we tie, I'd like to win as well. Jingo. Right. So that was an easy bet. And shout out to Maryland. You are currently live on FanDuel. Here we go. You're live, yeah. you're live for another seven hours and 40 eight minutes and five seconds so Mm -hmm. take advantage of the soft open as you can we'll be back in five with more soccer talk (laughs) and overreactions and some questions maybe from the internet on twitter it's still alive yeah that's right did you hear that for now it is it's still going right yeah last i checked it's crazy i I didn't oh shit this guy got a yellow card does he have that patch enjoy while you can always oh no it's not good Oh, no, hey, we're setting a tone. Fucking kick a guy in the knee. No, Get a no, yellow card. No, no, yeah. deal. That's the team we are. Sorry about it, Qatar. Fucking, you want to you wanna play against the United States? Bring a lunch pail. Bring some big shin guards. Bingo. Right. We're hacking. <laughs> so Gino Dest just got a yellow card there. Good hair on Tuzzy. Yeah. I believe he plays from Barcelona. He's pretty good. Hey, Burhalter's going to have to win or people are going to want his ass out. Sorry, oh, Bar- yeah. Sorry Barcelona. We got a lot of Americans playing overseas. That's why I think this team has a shot. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Young team. Don't Can't know lose the Wales, though. Wales is the size of Boston. No, Can't yeah, lose yeah. to that. Exactly. Team USA isn't Team USA, too. They're SeaWorld because we're killing Wales today. 
Hell yeah, Brendan Fraser. <laughs> you tried that earlier. I did. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I had to get it in somehow. Yeah, yeah. You, I you, had you, to. You did. I, I didn't know what you wanted from me. I, I was sneaking it in no matter what. All right, let's get to a break. Great work. Hell yeah. Hey, I man. almost said it that while man. we were looking at tweets. I was almost like, oh, that's a good, uh, good overreaction. You know what Team USA is today? <laughs> <laughs> I decided to wait. Stat that. Yeah, stat, stat that. that. I tried stat that. All right, we'll be back in five. This should be a terrible show, but I think we'll enjoy it. Uh, be a friend, tell a friend. Take five. Five. Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat Mack. They used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric in Brookings. <laughs> game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Hosting Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake putt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Uh oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right oh. off the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you've got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's. Oh! Hi, Daniel Russo! <laughs> wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes, serious. Go! Yes. Go! Yes! He's being spit with that 15. They celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm going to be a fan of that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota Bunker was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota Marker is back in beautiful Brooklyn, South Dakota. Not only are you incredibly intelligent and handsome, you're a man of your word. You picked North Dakota today, so I, I had know, to bury you. That's okay. But it's been nothing but incredible. The college game day crew is hospitable. In South Dakota State, I think we can all agree, they showed up here. Yeah. But I loved it. I've watched the show, obviously, forever. And yeah. it's on in every single NFL locker room. I told you that. Yeah, cool. So this is a big time deal for me, my family, my friends. All right. I'm back in the day here. Appreciate you, boys. It's from the training room at the Colts. AJ Watt tweeted. from every human that I've ever done television with like since way back in the day. They're like, we knew this day would come. Quick managers, old teammates. I mean, you don't get to turn on Twitter often anymore. They make it damn near impossible. Go up onto a stage with a couple legends and talk some shit in front of the incredible South Dakota fans. Whew, what an awesome opportunity. Dear Coach Friedman, I hope this letter finds you well. Although if I had to guess, it probably won't. <laughs>
because that was one of the most embarrassing defeats Notre Dame has faced in my lifetime. I mean, for Christ's sake, was Cad Pennington playing? Was Randy Moss playing? Was Matthew McConaughey coaching? No, they weren't. It was a bunch of guys we've never fucking heard of, and you still couldn't get it done. Now listen, you're 0-3 to start, which isn't the end of the world. But everyone in the Notre Dame community, they're fucking done with you, okay? I'm not done with you yet. I have a lot of faith in what you can do with those boys. But let me tell you right now, if you lose next week to California, I might be fucking done with you. I hate to say it, but Joe Montana is not walking back through that door, and neither is Jeff Savarginia. Your quarterback's hurt, so you're going to have to find somebody else. I've noticed that you haven't reached out to old Coach Lou to come in and either do the fucking newspaper trick or to do the bumblebee speech. Let me remind you, the previous guy never asked me to do that kind of stuff either. And look what fucking happened to him. I don't think it has anything to do with winning. I'll leave you with this. If I need to come in to Notre Dame Stadium, get a megaphone, and start singing to your to your four on Notre Dame. Wake up, DJ, go singing her name. I'll sing the whole goddamn fight song and get the boys going. Because like I said, if you start losing more consistently, you're going to be fucking deader than a doornail. I love you. I'm available. And please write back. With love. Coach Lou Holtz. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show on Overreaction Monday, November 21st. Today's show is presented by Cash App. Mahomes to Kelsey in the final minute. That's That's money. money. Pat's punt return for the win. That's That's money. money. I did not put that in. Yeah, you did. You shoehorned son of a bitch. Well, uh, well, if I I was going to shoehorn something, I would have said something like, Jamal Williams, three touchdowns for the win. That's That's money. money. But Bruce put it together, and that's why he didn't put that there. So that wasn't money, but Cash App is. (laughs) When personal finance connects you to both your funds and the stuff that matters, that's money. We're back. And that's Cash App. We can all agree on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys uh, know what else is money? What's that? Being able to handle our giveaways quickly. Why? Donald Trump back on Twitter. Why? <laughs> sending. That sounds Not like yet. something you what? added. Yeah. That sounds like you talked about Bruce <laughs> adding something in there. It's right there. That certainly sounded like something that bad, you dude. added in. There. I swear. I. Do you see that meme? Do you see that meme that fucking Elon, the owner of Twitter, put on Twitter? <laughs> I don't think so. Which one? What was it? Well, there's, there's a couple a of them. Yeah. There's a couple of them. I mean, he yeah. is Elon. He's firing on all cylinders. <laughs> he yeah, is, he is. He's got, he is doing Twitter really well right now, which he's the owner of it, I guess. Yeah. He's going to have to. Yeah. But nonetheless, sounds like something you added in there for sure. I added that in there. I apologize. Okay, but certainly. He's not on top back, of being able to handle our giveaways quickly. His account is. He is not. But a guy who graduated from Yale and Harvard, it was a war hero. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tell him, Tony. The guy is not afraid. Of- I don't know if this is what Cash App was hoping. <laughs> yeah. He's on Man. Twitter. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Who's if this- that? Pizon. Did I say Pizon? No, you forgot. You forgot that Italian man. Guys, Strong do- Italian man. Guys, do your own research. Mm-hmm. That's all you're trying to say, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
This is a fucking joke. <laughs> Anyways, I saw Cash App That's Money on my TV yesterday. It's a really? TV commercial now. Really? really? Josh Cash Allen. App, that's Money. Is it Josh Allen? Josh Allen, George Kittle, aren't they doing something with Cash App? No, Be are they Venmo or Cash App? I don't know. I, I, oh, I saw Cash App. It was Cash App. I saw, so yeah. not only to get political, we also <laughs> mentioned their competitor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. At the exact same time. I mean, this Venmo's is, not a competitor. They don't, they don't stand a chance against no. Cash App. We've no spent more money on Cash App than Cash App could pay us anyways. I mean, we've given away like $2.75 million <laughs> this year already mm -hmm. on Cash App. We're very thankful for Cash App. But I did like seeing Dad's money. Yeah. I actually thought of this entire situation, you know, where you're adding things and subtracting. Tracking mm -hmm. things and mm -hmm. doing everything like that. Sure. But nonetheless, Cash App is the home for all of our giveaways. Yeah, it's the best because you can send money, you can spend money, you can save money, you can right, split right, money, right. you can tip money, and you can donate money all in a single finance app. And it's real money. And it's real money. It's not fake money. Like some like of these stuff. crypto people are talking about these days. This We're is real Cash. We're very thankful for Cash App. They've made our lives a lot easier, and also they're making everybody's life easier with, you know, an ability to... You know, just tip somebody real quick or just pay something real quick. Just keep it moving. Don't worry about your wallet. Cash App's got your back. And that's money. money. Speaking of money, there is a man that kicks balls for the Dallas Cowboys who is tasked with banging home a 60-yard field goal, not once, but twice yesterday. Now, whenever I was watching it live, I saw him knock home his first 60-yard field goal, and I said, wow, look at this dude. Has it outside, the right upright, mm. plays a draw. That fucker's good. He would be four for four on 60-yard field goals in the NFL. Mr. Brett Maher, how you doing? Keep it moving. The Cowboys boys not only obliterating the vikings but their kicker obliterates a football then the nfl say whoa 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 can't have something come that easily for a kicker no 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 let's execute and display a beautiful picture of positionism and let's act like what he just did was not good enough because we had stopped the play didn't we immediately wow. after the ball was kicked to review a catch that was maybe a catch maybe not a catch to get them in the field goal range the play before if you do recall a week ago Gabe Davis of the Buffalo Bills made a catch that wasn't a catch that wasn't stopped for review in the final two minutes leading Walt Anderson to come out and say we should have stopped that, we should have reviewed that. Same type of situation. Much different ball game. C.D. Lamb on the sideline. Toe drag, swag, beautiful catch. Does he have possession of it? I think that particular angle says Yes, mm -hmm. he does have. There's other ones where the ball moves around, and they kind of skipped over the replay a couple of different times whenever they were showing it to get to the 60-yard field goal. Then after Marr proves that he's a dog and can bury home a 60-yarder on the road, they say, sorry, we're going to review that. Same outcome. It is a catch. We need you to do it again. Marr said, no fucking problem. Hold my beer. Hits a 60-yarder better this time. Yeah. Never a doubt. Hit it cleaner and further. Big Mike gives a fist pump. Brett Maurer unlatches his other latch. And this dude is unbelievable at the long ball. He's not going to go down as the greatest kicker in history because that man is kicking right now for Baltimore. But what Maurer has been able to accomplish from long range is nothing short of a feat of spectacular athleticism. He's mentally tough enough to be able to handle the distance. He doesn't try to overswing. He doesn't hit it too low. He hit the ball perfect the second time when he was asked to do it again when everybody on earth assumed he wouldn't. So congrats to Maher, AJ. Yeah, yeah is that, I want to ask you, though, like as kickers, do you get in, is there like a time when you feel like, hey, I can't miss? Is it like golf where you play real well one day and the next day you there be, could be like some kicks or some games or even weeks where you're like, I'm not really sure what the hell's happening here? So for me, uh, punting, there was long portions of the season where I thought the ball just looked bigger. You know, like in golf, the ball can look bigger sometimes. It got to a point in my career there where I learned what I was doing, where the ball just looked huge and the sweet spot looked massive. Vinatieri has gotten into the same thing where the ball just looks bigger, the sweet spot looks bigger, and the field can look shorter. Those are the best days. Mm -hmm. Whenever you get there and you're standing at the goal line and for whatever reason, it appears and feels as if you can punt a ball or kick a ball to the other goal line. It's like those are good days to have. Maher, when he backs up, I think it looks closer. I think he is very comfortable, and that's a big mental toughness thing, I think, which is why it's so impressive. He's a guy. He's a dog, and I'm a massive fan of him going back-to-back. -back. Now, the first one, kind of being a mulligan, you know, normally whenever there's a timeout called late, 
Guys try to get a snap and get a kickoff so they can read the wind and kind of read the situation, get a mulligan. Then people bitched about it so much that refs actually have to run in and try to stop it. So Meyer had to face the same exact nerves that he had to face on the second one in the first one. And sometimes that type of up and downness, you know, doesn't work out. For him to be able to lock back in and knock that home, I'm nothing short of amazed. And uh, congrats on that, pal. Not easy to do. Yeah. Not easy to hit one. Let alone hit no. two. And now go four for four from 60-plus in your NFL career. That's fucking very impressive. Very, yeah. very impressive. He's an absolute dog. And, it, and like, they're going to need him down the stretch, too. And I feel like – I don't know if it was before he was there. Like, I don't know if he kind of just flipped the switch this year. But he always kind of seemed like one of those guys who – was a little bit inconsistent, yeah. but seemingly did did make all like the big kicks. And this year, it seems like he's just drilling all of them. Yeah, I love watching that type of stuff. Uh, not easy at all to do. Another thing that I love is uh, when somebody has spectacular hair. Okay, you hear me talk about people's mm -hmm. hair all the time. I'm like, oh, good hair. Hey, I like why you, you like soccer. These soccer guys all have crazy nice hair. A lot of yeah. great hair in soccer. A lot of great cats in soccer. A lot of a lot oh. of. Good. I saw a head of hair this weekend that when it walked by our suite. Everybody in the suite stopped talking to gaze at the hair as it walked. Mm -hmm. And then as it hit the next suite, everybody in that suite stopped what they were doing and watched the head of hair walk by. Oh, and it was like every single suite was a domino effect of, oh, my Lord, look at that guy's fucking hair. I got a chance to meet the man. Evan Washburn's hair is a spectacle. Oh, yeah. yeah, This dude's hair yes. is gorgeous. This is me telling him, look right here. Hey, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I never met him before. All right. Never met that guy before in my life. Had to stop him and tell him, your fucking hair is remarkable. Mm. We're talking perfect up in the back is even done perfectly. It is. Yeah, right there is me saying, sir. You're I mean, look at his whole outfit. Like, he's got everything put put together perfectly it looks like it's a perfect tie i mean evan washburn i mean i didn't know if we we're doing a handshake or a dap <laughs> yeah I appreciate that either. we went I for the that. dap instead of the handshake you know classic there i was going for if you see <laughs> had to handshake oh, yeah. Yeah. had to adjust though to a full dap uh he was in a suit very white figured the handshake is what he was going to go with <laughs> One with the other, I appreciate that. He was a very cool man, and I think he's pretty humble, which I don't know how you could be with that fucking head of hair, yeah. honestly. And it's good to know now, too. Oh! Yeah, holy Woo! shit. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You run into someone with hair that cool, you, you know now, hey, this guy doesn't want a handshake. He wants to fucking yes. dap me up. He wants to see what I'm about, because he knows that when he looks at me, I got the best hair inside this entire stadium. He knows it. Every stadium he's ever walked into, he's got the best helmet. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is... Sp um, honestly, AJ... It walked by, and I'm talking about the hair, not the man. It, sure. It, it walked by, yeah. and it is just fucking perfectly. I mean, it was perfect. Yeah, shimmering. I, it was on. It looked better than this. It looked way better. Somehow it looked better than. I mean, it is big game too. The stars were out nice yesterday. Fade. Oh nice. yeah. Stars were in Indy for Jeff Saturday's home coaching debut. Not only you see really? Evan Washburn. Maziano was walking Whoa. around. Yeah. Maziano, yeah. Maziano was walking around. And what I seen of Maziano was a guy who had an apple earbud in, walking by yeah. at perfect speed and pace, very focused, oh. didn't even glance at the suite at all, would have said, Maz, boys, <laughs> good to see you, Maz. <laughs> didn't get an opportunity to because he was so locked in on his work. Steve Levy was in the building. Steve. Hey. Steve Levy was in the building. He stopped by the suite before I got there, said hello to Zito, said he was going to stop by afterwards. He did not. I understand he probably got busy. But when Jeff Saturday's coaching, the stars come out. Evan Washburn's hair was there. Mm -hmm. It was a fantastic day in Lucas. We need you there one time, AJ. We need you and Lucas with us in our suite. I mean, that looks like the, the greatest way to watch a football game. I've never watched a game like that in a suite that's actually field level. That's got to be sweet. It is sweet. No pun intended. Oh. Hey, it's a sweet, sweet. It's a sweet experience as well. The only issue is you don't know how many yards they're gaining. So you start, you, you watch the play, and now after, you know, Chuck and Darius and AQ and everything, I feel like I actually know what I'm looking for because I'm on the field with them. Yeah. You're literally I'm eye to eye with the quarterback. You should like, bring a helmet. You should wear a helmet and then really feel part of it. Okay, I mean, maybe. That'd be yeah, sweet. Great idea. You stop by, we'll get you in there. But you can see, like, with the little conversations that are happening, both in the secondary, you can kind of hear it. And then as soon as the play starts, you're going right to the Jumbotron to see how many yards are getting. Then you're right back to see if there's any extracurriculars. It is a, it is a real – it is one of those. But once it gets in the red zone, if it does down near you, 
Oh, you're in, it's virtual reality. You're in the fucking game. You're mm-hmm. that you're that drunken high kid at LSU that just walked on the field. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is literally what it feels like from there. Need you to join us. Got a lot of people tweeting me saying, a lot of seats down there in the suite. You want us to join you? We don't. We absolutely yeah. enjoy the what, fuck what out mean? of it. I thought you were having a giveaway or something for for Rick. And the people like five or six. Maybe yeah. maybe next year we'll do it. It is perfect. It is. We had like I think ten people in there this time. It yeah. holds like twenty something. You got it, the food situated, dude, don't you? You, mm-hmm. you got good food. Good food. Good Great vibes. Good vibes. Yeah, and good we are. I thought we were doing the giveaway for the wild card playoff game this year. For what? For the sweet. <laughs> That's hey. Do you get it? Because there's no chance that the Colts go to the playoffs. Oh come on! <laughs> or have a home game. <laughs> come on. Come on. Duh. That was rude. <laughs> and I do have a good idea, though. Uh, and this is completely separate. But rude. AJ usually Uh-oh. comes out on Fridays. Friday, you know, it's after Thanksgiving. Monday, primetime game at Indianapolis with the Steelers. Maybe he comes out on an overreaction Yeah, Monday. that's next Monday. Next Monday is uh, Monday oh. Night Football here in Indianapolis with the Steelers in huh. town. You going to come? Uh, I don't know. It's the first time I'm hearing of it. Go to hell. We're off Friday. We're off Thursday, Friday. Should potentially try to do the show Friday from the attic. Me and AJ both in there. Oh, you know, because I'm being Columbus. Oh, Ooh, sweet. That'd be sweet. sweet. But I Pull think, up a chair. I think we're all pretty excited to sleep in on Friday. I think after Thanksgiving, I think we're all pretty pumped to go. Hey, do you get the suite uh, for, like, say, Garth Brooks puts on a concert? Do you get your suite and not have to pay extra? So I don't know about Garth Brooks because I think that is going to be sold out. Chris probably. Angel, sure. somebody else. So Chris I'm Angel, it's your suite. You own it for the year, don't you? Yeah, so I get an email that I can buy more tickets at maybe another suite because where my suite is normally gets covered by whatever oh my gosh yeah yeah so i can spend more money if i'd like i get the opportunity first dibs cool first dibs though which is very nice okay you mentioned friday also reminded me hey this is our last black friday without a football game for the rest of our lives oh yeah because amazon yeah Yeah. let's go go um what else did we uncover oh montana state was sweet montana Mm -hmm. state was sweet it looked awesome um I do How not, cold was it for real? Cold. It was cold, cold. Yeah. It, it, looks was, like, it looked freezing. It was cold, cold. That's why those heaters were huge. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. So there was no heaters on the feet. There was no heaters mm-hmm. on the feet. There was heaters on the top. But I think there was a full generator type thing going on as well with who, who, how many generators the generators. Were. It was so cold. A lot of tech was not working. So I think everybody was working their ass off, trying uh, the best they possibly could. But it was cold, cold out there. I, I mean, on, I come from Pittsburgh, so normally pretty cold place. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been out in the woods a lot when it's cold. So I think I had a good game plan going in. But the no heaters down by the feet, I think, was the, the real boom for somebody doing three hours of television in there. Uh, that was something that was about two and a half hours in. Two hours and 15 minutes, maybe. Somewhere between 2.15 2.30. I lost feeling in my feet, got real pain in all my toes. Ooh. And I had two uh, socks on and a big furry boot on because I thought I was prepared in there. The others on the set did lose feeling in their feet earlier in the show. And I did look at their their shoe selection a couple times. And I thought to myself, aggressive, aggressive mm-hmm. decision with what you did. But I think you looked amazing. But also they're a little bit older than me. And I think I'm a little bit more mobile. But like everybody's feet were the big thing. That video gets released of Herb Street, obviously. Get it. I think he was – they were – because he had lost feeling in his feet. And I, I'm not going to talk – I did not know that was happening. Uh, I, I'm going to let Kirk do – Kirk will talk for that, whatever, however it worked. But Sweet outfit, though. He looked fucking yes. awesome. Yeah. And our, uh, everybody's feet on that stage were in bad, bad, bad spot. I think he was getting a heater uh, – a foot heater thing put on the bottom of his uh, sock because we would learned that we had that. Paula came in from the heated tent and was like, hey, they got feet heaters here because everybody's going through it. And there was a, I believe there was a massive like, ah, I would like that, I would like that. But we only had a commercial break. So I don't know if this is exactly what happened because I did not I did not see this happening. But I think he was getting a feet heater p- tried to put on his thing. And then they were trying to do that whole thing. I'll let Kirk talk about it. It was awesome, though. The Montanans were so incredibly hospitable. The Montana State Rodeo team, I appreciate the hell out of them. And uh, I can't wait to get back in the warmer weather because it feels like the Treasure State is a real one. It was beautiful. I picked Montana 
because Cole Anderson, my punt protector, yeah. uh, my personal protector, was a, a Montana for the mm -hmm. Grizzly for a long time. Yeah. And Mark Mariani, friend of mine, was also a member of the Grizz. He was there. He was on the uh, the digital show. I had to pick Montana State had a better team, though. I knew that looking at it. Uh -huh. Touchdown Tommy and them were fucking unbelievable. They did beat the hell out of Montana. The Montana State rodeo team, so fucking cool. So fucking nice. I can't thank them enough. I was a little bit worried about, like, I got no problem with this steer. You know what I mean? I got no problem with this particular sure. steer here. Why am I going to do it? They're like, well, this is, uh, this is a part of this is one of the events that we participate in, obviously, because this is a big part of ranching is keeping the steer and the cattle within your farm and your land. And sometimes you got to hop off a horse or an ATV and tackle that thing so we can get it back in. Uh, that was my first attempt. Uh, it was my first go at it. This steer is a million percent okay. Uh, I've been told, and I, and I checked up on it afterwards, and that – Coach Kyle right there. The big son of a bitch in the back, his name's Trav Johnson. I guess he is an incredible cowboy. Used to be a great quarterback uh, in the uh, state of Washington, in a farm town in Washington. COVID year was his senior year. Uh, Went to small school, got zero offers to play football. I damn. guess he was a great football player. So he's now a Montana State cowboy. And they say he is a guy. Real talent. He's a guy around there. They got the best cowgirl in America on their rodeo team. She was the one that was teaching me how to throw the thing. I missed that five times. I could not get the lasso. I could not figure out where to aim, how to aim. This one feels like one, though, that if I was to do full-time, I could probably do pretty well. Uh, there's a lot of form in that thing, and also a lot of nerves as you're staring down a barrel of a livestock. Yeah, I can imagine. I, I don't feel much nerves anymore, and that's going to sound uh, – probably alarming to a lot of people or no shit. I'm kind of just like a whatever happens, happens guy, always have been. If it doesn't go well, it's a story. If it does go well, awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's always that. When I'm standing in front of a gate that I'm controlling, I can open it or I can, I can, and on the other side is a fucking steer with sharp. That was fucking sharp. Oh yeah. It yeah. wasn't until I'm standing there and I'm like, I just learned how to do this a minute and a half ago. Had no idea I was doing this 45 minutes ago. No clue. Showed up there, no clue. I thought I was watching their team practice. <laughs> their team wasn't practicing. They just put that together for me. It was almost like, what do you want to do? So it was my practice. Oh. I'm all of a sudden at practice. First so it's like, lesson. okay, got to do everything here. And they were so hospitable. So I'm staring. At that moment, I'm going eye to eye with this deer. What? Why am I doing this? Like, you know, like actually, why am I right here why am i doing it and then i open the gate and then that fucking thing comes flying out and you're supposed to grab it immediately upon exit from there and if oh shit oh you actually hear me say oh shit oh shit i missed the horn and then i grab the steer down a little bit further and then it's all it's all all, all back in my training you got to get a fucking got to get a rear naked choke on that right steer you got to push the left one down and then as you're pushing it down inside your thigh you grab in for a rear naked choke oh. almost. And then you got to like hang clean, right? Which I'm pretty good at. Mm -hmm. Boom, you're coming back with it. And so. They tell you how much that steer weighed? 500 to 600 pounds. God. Holy well, shit. Well, that's why, I mean, you, you can't pussyfoot around because no. that thing will fuck you up if you're yes. not, you know, like yes. big time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And they also told me that as like, they were all very positive, you know? Uh, Coach Kyle Whitaker is a current professional oh. cowboy who does the steer wrestling is a professional. Mm -hmm. So like he was teaching me it and I had to ask him a couple questions. Like he would show me something, they have a little fake one, a little rubber one that you practice on. And he would show it and then I'd get in there. I'm like, so you're telling me. And then um, and he's like, all right, I'll show you again. And I'm like, this guy's probably scared to death. And <laughs> yeah. For me though, I would like to know what I'm doing here. So I'm, I'm not scared to ask like, I'll ask a quick five questions. Like, hey, I'm about to, like, let's try to get this as successful as possible. And he was very motivating. Very coaching. And then there was like somebody who was like, all right, now let's make sure we do this safe now or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a fucking wild animal. Yeah, yeah. This is a wild, it was a big one too. I mean, it was a big son of a bitch. They were very nice though. Incredibly nice, very hospitable. Out 40 minutes away from everything. I, dr I had no idea I was going there either. Oh. Drive all the way out there. I'm like, holy fuck, what am I doing? And I'm like, well, I can't wait to maybe get on a horse and watch these guys practice. Had no idea. Showed up at the Bobcat Arena. They're all just waiting on me to get her. What do you want to do? Oh, well, I wanted to watch her practice. I had no idea. Had to take off all my fucking clothes because I had to, I had like jacket, 
two hoodies on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said, I got two chains on and a watch, right, in front of all these cowboys right before I'm going around. I'm like, all right, everybody relax. Yeah. Okay? Turn around. <laughs> everybody relax. All right, everybody needs to relax. I do wear chains or whatever, and then I get in there and do it. They're very nice. I, I, I have the utmost respect for those cowboys out Man. there. Shit, are you kidding me? It's a, legit. Yeah. It's a cool Flavor. world. It's a, it's a cool world. They live in. I, that's like what Jordy want, wants us to come out there at some point and do – like a whole competition thing with he and his brother. They do that stuff. They ride horses. They tie up the legs. They do everything. So I think that's a goat that they tie up or whatever because they talked about that. And then normally for the steer wrestling, you'd be on a horse, and then you get off yeah. horse, and then you boom, and then the horse kind of moves away, yeah. and then you do the whole thing. So I obviously not a good enough horseman. Equa. Equestrian. 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 I'm not a good enough equestrian to do that. I've only been on a horse twice. But they – they do it on ATVs. There's a lot of ranchers, I think, on uh, ATVs these days. Changing the game. I think ATVs are a big, which I'm pretty good. I'm pretty solid on an ATV. Uh-huh. I don't know about the real horseback, but the ATV, I think I could have pulled it off. They were very nice. I'm very appreciative, very grateful. And uh, that'll be something I'll never do again. But I will certainly say, like, <laughs> yeah, wrestled some steers mm-hmm. in Montana. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a hilarious yeah. line. Montana awesome experience. Yeah. Awesome experience. As a whole, enjoyed it. Just the state that itself. Was a postcard, you know, like that yeah. is that was one of the first places. I mean, you're laying in a beach town. It's like, oh, this is beautiful. Yeah. You know, like this is beautiful. You're just looking at the ocean. And I don't want to, I don't want to talk shit about the ocean, but you go to one beach, you've been to a lot of them. <laughs> been to, yeah, you've most. Been, of them. You've been to a lot of them. Now, obviously, there's bigger beaches in parts of Florida on the Gulf and other places like in Hawaii. My wife and I go to this one beach where it's huge and the views are different. But normally you're staring out the ocean pretty similar. You know, you're looking for that line out there. It's out there. Some places have bigger waves than others, but the ocean, pretty much similar view. The desert, you're looking for the mountains in the desert, Mm -hmm. right? That's what the view is. That's why everybody wants to go to Phoenix. And that's why everybody looking for the view of the mountain and the way the sun sets and the colors and everything like that. I'm a big views guy. That view is one that I have not experienced. You're in a fucking Bob Ross painting. I mean, you are actually, with the way the mountains are set up and the way it just, everywhere you look is just beautiful. It's certainly, uh, you could see why people would want to go there. In the Montanans, great people. Oh yeah. Great. They fucking hate, (laughs) hate what Montana is slowly mm-hmm. becoming, but there's a lot of places still that everybody kind of disappears to and just lives the Montana lifestyle. They call it like the last best place on earth. I think a lot of places they, they call it because oh. you know, like doors unlocked, like community, mm-hmm. like out there hunting, fishing, let your kids go outside and do that. But I guess during COVID, a lot of New Yorkers came in, a lot of LA people came in, in certain spots of Montana. So there's a lot of shit yeah. being talked about those spots of Montana by the Montanans, if my read was accurate. And then we're showing all the signs. Don't move to Montana. Don't move to Montana, all these people. And then we got Sir Nick Faldo doing the guest picking at the end, which, you know, <laughs> was kind of uh, interesting. Perfect. Thing. I don't, South I don't know if the Montanans cared that he was a knight uh, at, at a couple different moments mm, of that not. show. But I'm happy <laughs> that we had a show there. I'm happy I got to go there. I'm happy I got to meet a lot of people. I apologize for picking Montana over Montana State because of how nice Montana State was to me. Blood's are going to water, though. I apologize. Mm-hmm. Cole Anderson saved my ass a lot. Mark Marion, a good dude. Tom McMahon's family, I believe, right. also part of the Grizz, even though Mitt's mom went to Montana State, Ooh. which I learned afterwards because I could have wow. picked Montana State if that was the case. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was the situation, but it was awesome, AJ. It was awesome out there. It looked like it. looked not, sweet. Not to mention amazing. some of those fans. I mean, that TikTok, we saw that one kid. That, oh, that yeah, kid got a tattoo. Did you oh, hear yeah. this? <laughs> I saw it. You, I saw it in the, the old group chat you put in, right? That's I was, awesome. I was so... I didn't put it in. Yeah, I didn't put it in. I just sent these pictures in because I don't want to run the whole video. It's a minute 44 of this. And uh, (laughs) I, this dude's name is Tanner. Tanner was a great guy. Mm -hmm. Tanner came out, sat out there. And there there was a group of people that watched the show on Friday. And we were, uh, you know, I was chatting with them afterwards. If you sat in four degree weather to watch our show and you can't even hear our show. You got to watch on your phone, (laughs) but your phone's too cold. It freezes. You can't even watch it. You're literally Mm -hmm. just standing there expecting to maybe hear something I say. I was so grateful. So I went out and literally chatted with everybody. This guy was just chilling there, real quiet, you know, kind of hanging out. And I'm like, what's up, man? What's your name? And he goes, uh, hey, we signed my t- like, sign my arm or whatever. 
And I'm like, uh, you really want me to do that? He's like, I'm going to get it tattooed. And I immediately was like, no, no, no. Yeah. No, no, no. And he was like, no, no, I'm going to do it or whatever. And then he gives the phone to one of the other guys that was waiting around. The other guy had these sick aviators, good flow. Ooh. I mean, he looked awesome. He starts filming it. And I'm literally like in the video, like explaining. This is not, I do not want this guy to do this. Uh -huh. This is not like a, hey, Tanner, need you to do this or I'm never talking to you again. Complete opposite. I do not like this. <laughs> this is his first tattoo. This dude was an incredibly cool guy. I appreciate this honor. This motherfucker did it though. He won got a, he got a, like a living room tattoo of my autograph in gloves, freezing cold hands. <laughs> on his arm, it'll be there forever. And I told him he needs to get a cover up and Tanner was like, no, it'll be on there forever, man. <laughs> Never got a tattoo, his first one. Hey, I appreciate the hell out of you, Tanner. You're a good hey, dude. Hey, hey, Tanner, baby. Welcome. That was a daunting task though, him telling yeah. me it's gonna be on yeah. forever and he's never got one before. <laughs> Tanner pulled the trigger, what a night. Uh, I appreciate you, man. I honestly do, Tanner. You're a good dude, Tanner. Now, I do not want anybody else to do this. This is not something I am openly calling for. Actually, the complete opposite. <laughs> Uh, if you want me to sign something that is materialistic, cool. Body, I never like doing it because you don't want me on there. There's no reason for me on there. No reason at all. But Tanner, I appreciate the honor, which I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Was it the greatest? Did you put more into that signature than any ever before? Or? Well, that's what I was saying with the gloves and the, yeah, the whole thing. I don't know if that was my best. Is there anybody uh, that you would tattoo? <laughs> anybody's signature that you would tattoo on your body? Can you think me? about any anybody? Yeah. Joe DiNardo. <sighs> Rest in peace. Other than him. Other no. than Joe. Well, that's it. Bill Paxton. Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. It turns out everybody that I, I was already, already passed is going to be tough for them to give an autograph. How John about you? Cougar Mellencamp. Cool. <laughs> Shinzu. <laughs> Shinzu did die. Yep. Is he still alive? No, Mellencamp or Shin? Mellencamp's still Shin. very much alive. Yeah, alive and well. Very, wow. His, le his legs are tired, though. His legs are so tired. <laughs> like Justin Fields. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's getting uh, – John Mellencamp is getting uh, – he's on a pitch count for standing. That's right. <laughs> at his Wait, age. What? Yeah, he's on a what? pitch count for standing. Yeah. I guess. Justin stands for this American – he might stand. He's he touring, right? Yeah, well, doesn't he tour still? He yeah, he's got to keep all the energy in his legs. So in Jim Irsay's suite, he uh, didn't stand for the national anthem yesterday. <laughs> it was Veterans Appreciation Day, obviously. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of vets on there. Photo, photo Joel Mellencamp oh, yeah. sitting there. And then there's somebody next to him that's sitting down. And then there's a child right behind him that isn't standing as well with the feet up on Mellencamp's thing. That's bad parenting, too. And then there's a bunch of people standing mm -hmm. around him and everything else. It is just, uh, it is certainly taking over the internet. It has. I mean, especially in some parts. Oh, right, a pitch Mellencamp count? hates America. Real? Yeah, I mean, there was people saying what Zito just said. There. Yeah, yeah Jack gets dunked from the, from the half-court line on him. He's in Ursa's suite, too. Like <laughs> That's what's tough. You know, like, Wait, is the pitch count thing? What is the pitch count? Well, that's what I was thinking. Mellencamp's on a pitch count right now and standing up. Connecting dots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure yeah. out. Yeah. And I understand he's always been like a uh, – like I would not have connected that dot. I would not have. Yeah, he can only stand a certain amount of times every single day. He's right. John Mellencamp. Well, uh, on that day, though, with what they did at halftime, it just seemed as though that was not the right move for Mellencamp. Dude, it was a lot of military. It was Military Appreciation Day in there. I mean, blue was green, you know, before mm -hmm. military was putting camo so he can hump right in Jalen Hurts' face. Yeah. At the end of that thing. <laughs> at the end of that thing. And Jalen Hurts, by the way, right on cue. Right. Jalen's a dog. Yeah, he's Man. awesome. Jalen's a that dog. That team can go. Yeah, I love him. I'm a big fan of him. With Sue and Linville Joseph in the middle, that was like their only real hole, right? Halftime, yeah. one zip, the United States of America, over oh, yeah. Wales. Woo! That's great news. Woo! Huge. Joining us now is a man. Stand for that, Mel and Camp. Hell yeah. Yeah, you son of a bitch. I, I understand there's some people who feel the way they feel uh, about it, but if seemingly every single vet in Indiana is standing around you and in front of you, which is what it felt like yesterday in Lucas Oil. <laughs> they, they actually initiated a whole new class of uh, Marines, Air Force, every branch of Space service. Force, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Army, National Guard, and... Uh, Coast Guard? I think Coast Guard. I think everybody. It was... The amount of military yesterday was a lot. A lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Now... There's going to be people that are going to talk about that on one side or the other forever about it because military has become politicized. But Mellencamp in Ursay's suite on Military Appreciation Day with every single military member seemingly within a fucking 50-mile radius of Indiana being there, 
just clearly choosing not to is an interesting move. That is a that is an interesting move for old John Mellencamp, and I assume Mellencamp doesn't care because I think he is uh, kind of taking a stand against America. But he grew up in a small town, has a lot of money now, sitting in an owner's suite. Terrible country, I understand. I mm-hmm. uh, hope everything works out for you, Mellencamp. You know what I mean? I'm sure in another country it would be better. You know what I mean, John? I assumed he was just lost and just singing, oh. In the USA, just to himself and for, forgot what was going on around him. Yeah, I don't know. It seemed like it was uh, on purpose. He couldn't even see four feet in front of him because there was people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In Ursa Suite. Was that his goal? Like going in? Was that the plan? I don't think this is probably from a suite next to one of the Ursa Suites. Took the picture of this one here. You know what I mean? You're going to have to go to the, yeah. Yeah, what's Coach set, doing up setting there? Setting a bad example for... Well, that's mm-hmm. the kid behind him, yeah. That's what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, the kid sees Sam doing it. John Mellencamp. But everybody else in the... I mean, literally... Yeah, everyone. Every, every other human in the I, stadium just doing hey, it. At first, I was going to say, is it possible he was, like, back in the suite and didn't know the anthem was going on, Maybe. but this picture clearly shows. Well, yeah, this is why we're talking about it. We... Uh, <laughs> We, this wasn't hearsay. No. Uh, this, also, this thing is done. This this picture has done on Twitter, which is still alive. Yep, I'm sure Mellencamp is surprised to hear that, but it is still alive, <laughs> and uh, it is. He's eating popcorn, like he's just lounging. There's no thought of getting up. Maybe he wanted to sing it. Now, to be clear, a vet who served, I think, was singing the national anthem as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a full. <laughs> I mean, there's a flag that covered the entire field, and that was all. Uh, uh, Gold Star families, yes, who have lost Jeez, somebody in service. Come on, Cougar, you see, I'm telling you, God. I'm telling you, like it was, it was the oh, most military, man. military appreciation day of all time. Like, it, and I'm, I'm being 100 percent serious. But Gold Star families were holding the flag. Okay, every branch was represented in a chorus at one point, singing. A vet was singing it at halftime. Every single. Uh, branch of the military had an initiation in which they did the full thing. There was a guy, but whole singing by military folks singing that at half. I mean, it was Is he flossing. Maybe was he pissed that uh, the Colts didn't represent and salute Gunnery Sergeant Jonathan Sins like the Vikings did on, on their scoreboard? I did see that. Yeah, out of uh, out USA, of, uh, USA. <laughs> Minnesota lost by 37, what? and they put Johnny Sins up on their jumbo <laughs> drawn on military appreciation, which the sir, dong guy. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the dong sorry, guy. Yeah, the inter- yeah. I only know him as the internet guy that everybody puts in everything, yeah. mm-hmm. and then I know he's porn star guy, <laughs> man of many. Uh, and trades. a lot of a lot of people have fallen for it on the internet. I don't think ever a team on a Jumbotron. I don't think so. But here we are. 2022, <laughs> anything could happen. But shout out to Mellencamp. He's getting cooked in Indiana right now. Yeah. Yeah. I heard yeah. a lot of people saying the Colts lost because Mellencamp disrespected the flag in America. Hard to, hard to argue that. Yeah, I agreed. Killed their season. What Von Miller say? He said to win, you know, you got to be living right. Like mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. In the yeah. owner's suite, Military Appreciation Day, yeah. Gold Star Families. With the flag out in front, these people have all, you know, lost somebody in war, in time, in their tough lives, tough experiences, blue collar people. John Mellencamp, fuck these people. Yeah, Cougar don't piss piss shit. Fuck these people, man. What are we talking about? Maybe that is why we lost. Could be. be. Maybe. Something Mm -hmm. to think about. Nonetheless, do whatever you got to do. But if you're in the owner's suite and you do it, it's going to be a conversation. What a goal we scored. Yeah, unbelievable. Joining us now is a man who can maybe break down the first half between the United States of America and Wales, our soccer aficionado, one half of the hammer, Don Cowboys. Ladies and gentlemen, Bubba Gumpy. Yeah, Gumpy! Gumpy, it seems like the World Cup's going off without a hitch. How you doing, pal? How is the tournament so far? Uh, The games are going well. Everything else seems to be an absolute shit show, as you said, but... uh... These American boys are running rampant, my friend. They are fast out there. Are we playing well? We look fast. We look quick. We're dominating. Is Wales a good team? Should we be pumped about this or no? Coming in, I would say Wales probably was a decent squad. I think you should be very pumped to be up 1-0 right now. Could be up more. But, yeah, it's a hot start for the Americans. Setting up for a big clash on Friday, my friend. Oh, yeah, when we beat the shit out of England. What did (laughs) England do today? They beat Iran? 
six two. Yeah, absolute drop in, my friend. I didn't know. I didn't know Iran played soccer. I thought that we had a different team in our division. Well, that's a whole. I mean, there's a lot of those countries we're going to learn about. That's every World Cup where we're <laughs> like, how is this team doing what they're doing? Wales real small, right? America real big. There's always been a conversation that America can't be good because our best athletes don't play. This is the year, though, huh? You're saying the boys are buzzing and flying around. We're winning the soccer Lombardi. We got more speed than everybody. We got more pace Ryan, than everybody. Ryan. We got more skill than everybody. Ryan. We got dogs over there. Is this a year we can win this thing, Gumpy, from this first half of play after watching? They keep playing like this. They should go on a run for sure. Like they were. Don't let different. us win. No. No. Do not. Don't different you fact. dare. They Don't. are. They are running past Wales. Everybody right now. They look good. AJ, what's your question for Gumpy, pal? Anything? Good. Uh, everything. I see Alexi Lawless actually doing some uh, analyst work here. So great to see that he is out there. But uh, Goop, with everything going on, do you think He's there's a chance that uh, Cutter gets another World Cup eventually? Maybe four, eight, twelve years down the road. Uh, I'd like to say no, but the head guy of FIFA was seen uh, shaking hands and having a laugh with the head guy from Saudi Arabia this morning. So FIFA will continue to do whatever the fuck they want. Of course. Yeah, so what happened with the armband for the captains? They were told you'll get a yellow card immediately. So Qatar gets to pick the rules too and how they're enforced. Is that real? Yeah, so if Harry Kane walked on the pitch with that armband on, yellow card right away. Uh, about half an hour ago, it came out. They're making Belgium take the word love off the collar of their jerseys as well. Well, I mean, how is this, how is this happened, yeah, though? Dumpy, how is this happening? This is, I'm telling you, man, everyone's like, oh, watch the doc on Netflix. The doc on Netflix lets Seth Blatter tell his story, lets the head guy of Qatar tell his story. The thing on Netflix is dog shit, as far as I'm concerned. I already knew about Seth Blatter. Like, this is this is absurd, and it's getting worse by the day. The fa fact that it's being played right now, as well, like it is. This is a nightmare. Dude. Yeah. So obviously, the seats are empty. You see the empty seats everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the whole thought, though, that it was happening in a desert, so it had to move to later in the season or later in the year because of the temperature. That would have been something that maybe would have disqualified Qatar from having uh, the event to begin with, let alone not having the facilities and then not being able to go ahead and just kind of change a little bit of the guidelines because you're inviting the world into your country whenever you get a World Cup. It was just announced that Budweiser is just going to give all the beer that they were supposed to give to the World Cup to the winning country. So now wow. Bud Diesel's, Why? Bud Lights, Why? Bud Zeros, Why? and everything that is on the line is just going to the winning country. Qatar banned the sale of beer in stadiums. This is obviously a conversation that was had before it started. Do you think Qatar was just lying, 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 and then when it all happened, they're like, once we get here will change all the rules or did fifa maybe know this was coming and not tell anybody gumpy i'd say it's a little of both i bet fifa knew but not to the extent they should have known you know what i mean but qatar knew they were going to do this the whole time like everything everyone's like oh it'll be fine it'll go off without a hitch it's like yeah now everybody's there now we're fox do whatever you want like it it is really at the end of the day as a soccer fan a true soccer fan it is really sad it is. It's a disgrace, to be honest. Well, because the soccer Lombardi has mm -hmm. been ho held in such high regard. Yeah, right. With all the other yeah. trophies. Yeah, they're, they're up there next to the actual Lombardi, allegedly. Yeah, and the Concafa championship as well. Yeah. 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 Don't fucking do it. Right up so there. So what's, what's next, though? I mean, yeah. are they going to, at, at halftime here, are they going to say, hey, the U.S. looks too fast. Make them play with eight in the second half. Gump. See, uh, they're going I'm, to. They might. Well, you Can't saw no. you saw the start of that game yesterday, like that being called offside, and then ten minutes later, we get a Fuck. fucking pitcher that looks like a Homer Simpson cartoon <laughs> that the guy's <laughs> kneecap was offside. Like that took ten minutes to drum up that fucking graphic. Like it is, it's bad. Qatar. That could have been the worst team that's ever played in the World Cup yesterday. Yeah, oh! not even not even able to change the rules enough for them to get a win. But the yeah. the yellow card thing's a big because that's the home country changing rules. Yeah, like uh, imagine Harry Kane. Yeah. Harry we... Kane walks oh. on the field, yellow card. Then you get a yellow card for some stupid tackle. You're down to ten men. Thanks for coming out. Well, and isn't it, is it still an accumulation of yellow cards? If you get too many, you're out of game. Yeah, and those go to the, the next round as well. Like, it is...
That it's, is, it's a nightmare, dude. It's bad. It isn't is FIFA bad. supposed to set the rules? Doesn't FIFA set the rules in place before and all, like, what you can and can't do? Yeah, that's why it's a problem. But they're backing Qatar's decisions. Yeah, yeah. they're like, yeah. wait, can't yeah. have beer. Remember the, the FIFA president. They just won't go against them, I guess? Yes, they this FIFA president. Yeah. The, oh, the FIFA president said, you can't drink beer for three hours. Sorry about it. So You'll like, survive. Yeah. It's like, bro, <laughs> yeah, that's we not will, what it's about. Day. Christ. I mean, the whole thing, it's supposed to be fun. It's a celebration. Have a fucking pint with the lads. Now you just can't do it. Yeah, not this year. This year you want to have a pint with the lads, you better be ready to serve five to ten. <laughs> but you just can't. Yeah. This can't happen again. The tournament shouldn't be right now. It'd be so much bigger if it was in the summer when it was supposed to be. No other sports going on. It's just a lot of injured players coming in, too, because they're coming right from their domestic leagues. Like, it is. It's bad. All right, let's go win this. This is the one yeah, we win. Yeah, we got to win this one. Let's go win this one. We're yep. going to win this one. You guys suck, right? Canada's got no shot. Uh, Canada's got some young dogs. They'll they'll put up a fight for sure. Yeah, but they pay them in porridge, I thought. So they're not really ready to run around the pitch. Oh, yeah. Why? Canada hates paying their players, mm -hmm. right? Don't care about sports. Care about He's masks. So Look how mad he is. <laughs> Pud <laughs> Poutine and Tim Hortons <laughs> gift cards. <laughs> Yeah, you guys much. get to don't represent. Get me started. Yeah. Don't get me started on the mass in Canada. All right. All right. <laughs> Gumpy, we appreciate you, buddy. Thanks for breaking it down on this overreaction. Yeah, hey, Dolphins. Good. Hey, Dolphins might go, huh? This might be the year. Yeah, we're yeah. cooking. We're going. If I didn't realize if Chiefs would have lost last night, it would have been number one seed right now. Oh, yeah. Hey, you're close. Because it's weird. It's weird because I was told the Jets after the Dolphins bye week were going to be first in the AFC East. I just, oh. it was weird. I thought, I thought that was going to happen. Who told you that? Uh, the internet, everybody. Well, well Hey, Twitter's well. still working. Did you hear? Yeah. Thank I mean, if I lost Twitter out here, I'd be in a bad spot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you back soon. Ladies and gentlemen, our soccer aficionado and also Finn Fam community member, Bubba Gumpina. Thank you, Gumpina. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to watch this game. We're going to go ahead and uh, get ready for an Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Right. Long weekend for Aaron after what happened on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to hear his thoughts on what happened against Tennessee and what the future looks like. That'll happen tomorrow. Uh, Connor, any final thoughts for the people watching along at home? Uh, just remember that, you know, even though the World Cup is happening, a lot of terrible things are happening in that country, we get to live in America and we don't have to abide by those rules and that tyranny. Yeah, well, Mellencamp saying, I'm not even allowed to sit down when a song's playing. Yeah. But. Well, I want him out of Indiana forever. Never to return. Cougar? Banished. In Ursay yep. sweet, bro. How do you feel about that? That's easy. Did Ursay have any idea that it, that would happen? No, but like that's setting up for that, yeah. that's setting up for a conversation to definitely happen. Yep. And it's like I know a lot of people maybe on the East Coast and the West Coast thought that when that was all happening, it wasn't the reason why ratings went down. There's a lot of people in the middle of the country, okay? The ones that sign up to go if anything was ever to, if oh, Putin yeah. was to ever start snooping around a little bit like he is right now with Ukraine or something, there's a lot of family members out here in the middle of America who have signed a piece of paper that says like, fuck it, if we need somebody, I'll go. And they all felt very, very, I think it was a lack of communication. I think it was uh, obviously one, one, one way, one, one, the other. But there was a lot of people that eat, sleep, and breathe football that felt as if the NFL <laughs> had told them to go fuck themselves. And you can feel the opposite way about it. That's 100% that's fine. I understand that you feel that way. You're always going to feel that way. But that is not a good conversation to get started around the Indianapolis Colts in Indiana for Jim Irsay because fucking Mellencamp wants to do it. I, don't, I just don't think that's the right – I don't think it's a good strategy. I don't think it's a good strategy, AJ. I honestly don't. I'm curious to see his response. Like – Will Mellencamp have a response to all of this? No. No. Mellencamp is like outlaw. Like always, I think that is like one of his things almost like it is to be expected, that whole thing. But the way people will draw now, because Jim was in, it's Jim's. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fuck that guy. It'll become a full, yeah. That's how, that's how it's going. Unless there's video, unless there's video like that we don't have of Jim coming up behind him in the middle of it and just yanking him up by his neck and standing that'd up. Be awesome. Oh, that'd be yeah. awesome. Brother. Well, <laughs> you, you, can, you can be deep thinking, having your own thoughts. Look Not around good. you. Just there's fucking an ooh raw suite, right? <laughs> yeah. There's literally the Marines. They just had a birthday two weeks. They got a birthday suite right next to you, John. Like whoever took that photo, very offended. Oh yeah, for uh -huh. sure. Yes. Very oh, yeah. offended, whoever it is. And there's a lot of people that potentially are in on military appreciation day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the kid is one thing. Like Mellencamp, 
come on. Well, is this your first time at a game before? Is this your first time, you know, being around uh, troops or families of troops? Like, that's what doesn't make any sense. I just don't think he gives a shit. I don't yeah. think he cares. But what I'm saying is, John, like, you put your, your friend, Jim. Bad spot. Hey, True. John, you just put your friend, Jim, in an interesting spot. Something to think about. People are going to... Oh. Dockets. It's bad. Send yeah. Dockets saw. Dockets saw it from an unnamed Twitter account. Yep. It might have been Dockets' Twitter account. His burner put that out there, and then Dockets grabs yeah, it. Laced up. Always the been a fraud. <laughs> and then that got sent into Outkick, <laughs> and then it got sent. I mean, Jeez. it's just like a bum 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 bum. Uh, Pink houses though is a banger. Yeah, sure is. Yeah. I mean, sure. Not anymore. anymore. <laughs> His greatest listening. hits actually. He's fucking great, great album. All right, let's get out of here, huh? Let's watch this game. Let's do fucking hammer Dad. in 15 minutes. Can't wait to hear what you boys are mm-hmm. thinking for tonight's Cardinals-Niners game, Wide. which we will certainly watch live from Mexico. The United States are about to handle Wales. They're not called Team USA today, though, are they? Nuh-uh. Called SeaWorld. And Wales is Shamu. What's that mean? We're showcasing them? It means we're going to treat them terribly, and we're going to kill them, and <laughs> they are never going to play soccer again. <laughs> this ain't free will. Uh-uh. All right, let's get to uh, let's get to the rest of our fucking day here. This has been a tough one. <laughs> what? Maybe our worst overreaction Monday of all time. Well, I disagree. I think it's been really yeah. good. We mean? had a minute and a five clip from earlier today when we were talking about Twitter <laughs> that maybe is our best clip of all time. It, we start talking about the World Cup at the end of it. Mm-hmm. We tie in Twitter. And then there's a duck hunter in there, yep, yep. and then there's a little sport, and then the World Cup is at the very end of it. It's 65 seconds, and it is our show pretty much to a T. And uh, we're lucky to do it every single day. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, we'll be doing a giveaway, I believe, tomorrow. We're off Thursday, Friday. Game day's in Columbus on Saturday. That right. should be fun. The eyes of the world Woo. are upon the Ohio Fox in Columbus. I can't wait to get over there and feel the energy, AJ. I can't wait. It should be uh, as the week builds you know as the week goes it builds more and more every single day here so yeah i think they'll be primed and ready by the time you get in town i think we have a pretty good spot i think game day has a pretty cool spot i think oh, you think? I, would, I would imagine game day has a pretty good spot yeah i think we have a pretty cool what spot. do you think and then no you guys are back behind the river over here what do you think they're gonna do that wow. well, I, don't, hey, like, hey. Hey, I don't know i have no idea what's gonna I the think way it's, you roll with, I think we don't know what show which yeah exactly show you're pulling yeah for, there's, so. that, there's that other show with the finger gun guy <laughs> who's the coach at Ohio strings, State. you and wex you're pulling was that one live from the chop house i just saw that clip of oh. you tackling the person for the first time i didn't know you were telling them to throw it high too so you get those rings. oh yeah, yeah. Hey, well, they wanted me to just to hit him. I was like, you can't just hit a dude standing there. You got to throw him a ball. Okay. Right? Yeah, but then you said throw it high. Yeah, so throw it high so I can yes. drill the poor bastard. It's TV. It's television, guys. It's not a fundamental. Oh, t- sorry. Oh, 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 is that right? Oh, oh what are we oh. talking about this war? Yeah. What are we even prognosticating TV for? What is it? Oh, if you're gonna ask me to ta- I don't want to tackle him, but if you're gonna ask me to tackle him, you got to expose the ribs. That's of the only course. way it's gonna be decent. I feel like. I thought you laid a pretty good hit. Excited for Saturday. Excited I was for trying moment. not to fall down. Trying to okay. Slip. Yeah. Look a little slick. Thank you to Rapport for joining us. Thank you to Hammer Down, which is on in 3.20. A little extra time today. There's uh, some things we got to go over before the show starts. Uh-oh. Okay, so 3.30-ish Eastern Standard Uh-oh. Time. Uh-oh. We oh, shall no. see what happens with Hammer Down. Yeah. Cannot wait yeah. to watch. You and, Goomp, you and Goomp have issues or what? I think there's something. Oh, there's a surprise coming. Oh! 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 Big oh! surprise, YouTube.com <laughs> forward slash hammer. Done. Happened in about 20 minutes. We'll be back tomorrow with Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. We hope America can... Is it Vegas Dave? Tom? Finish this out. Oh, come on. All right. It's not that. See you, uh, yeah. see you later, everybody. Goodbye. We appreciate you. Happy Thanksgiving week. Say something nice to somebody. Goodbye. <laughs>